everyone and welcome to the 29th Abu Dhabi Chess Festival round 3 and here I'm gonna be with you woman chess grandmaster Maria Gevurkan and I want to remind you that the tournament after second round has 16 players who have shown 100% result and we can start the games just started and I don't know why we cannot see this first board yet, but we can start from the second board where Grandmaster Fedosey Vladimir is playing with the black pieces. And as you can see, it was played the uh, Antimeran. And Bishop G5. On the third board, we have the American Grandmaster Hans Niemann Mock with the black pieces against the Chinese Grandmaster, Dai Chan Gren. And the game just started, E4 was played on the chessboard. The rest of the moves are going to, happening, to happen soon. On the fifth, uh, fourth board, we have uh, Santos, uh, Grandmaster from Spain, playing against Ratanvel, an in international master from India. And it was played uh, Sicilian. Let's see if it's going to transform to knight or for not yet. So basically the chess games are just getting started. And if someone in the chat would have any preferences to check any game, just let me know and I will be happy to check it out with you. D4 was played. And probably knight dwarf is going to happen. Looks like it, everything is leading to the knight dwarf. And on the board five, we have Aryan uh, Grandmaster from India, Aryan Chopra, playing against Abi Salimov. And the opening was played Karokan. We can say that we see a lot of Karokan in this tournament. I feel like we can, we can actually say it. Sport number. Five and there is board number six. Uh, Grandmaster from India, Chanda, playing uh, against Russian Grandmaster Murzin. And we see the London. We are having the London. I didn't see a London yet on the top boards in this tournament yet, but today we have the London system played here. Bishop g4. Well, this is one of the ways that black can play against London system. Well, it's going to be an interesting game. And board number seven, we have the international master Madaminov against the uh, Grandmaster Xiu Xianju and the game is just getting started. Let me check if we have a moves on the first board. Yeah, we have the f first moves on the chess. On the first board, Artemiev, uh, Grandmaster from Russia against Suleimanov, international master. And we can see that it was played. The King's Indian defense is going to happen, looks like. On the board number eight, we have uh, again Russian Grandmaster Kobalia playing against Atakan, uh, Fide Master from Iran. And on oh, the first moves, we have, uh, yes, we have the Knight Dorf and Bishop e3, e5, Knight b3, and Bishop e7. So uh, I bet they are still in a theory and well, let's see what's going to happen. Uh, looks like we're going to have one London system, two Nidorf, and uh, yeah, I mean, we have King's Indian here on the first board played with the C6 line. One more time, let me remind you in the chat if someone will have any preferences to check any game, just let me know and we're going to check it out. Uh, we have 
On the ninth board, we have uh, Grandmaster Matlakov against International Master Asaubayeva. Asaubayeva Vivisara. And uh, we can start from very beginning. So it was, it transformed to the King's Indian defense. E5, castle, and h6. The tournament is really very strong, and you can see a lot of famous names in the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival. Uh, for example, in this game, we have uh, two very famous players, uh, Grandmaster Matlakov, Asaubayeva. She became a world blitz champion this year. If I'm mistaken, it was rapid, please tell me, but uh, I guess it was the blitz and uh, second, second year in a row. And she's showing a great result lately in all the tournaments. Uh, I don't know how many norms she has, but uh, her rating is already too close to be 2,500. And maybe we're going to have a new grandmaster, a woman grandmaster soon. It is going to be an interesting game. Uh, in the King's Indian lines, we know that black is usually trying to play on the king side and white is trying to create some kind of an attack on the queen side and it's a two-flank game. Uh, it's a very aggressive line and uh, let's see. Well, on the first board, we don't have much moves yet. We'll move to the second board. Yes, still in the theory. And uh, let's check the on the tenth board. Uh, Salem or Sale is playing with the black pieces, uh, with the white pieces. Sorry, against Faizrahmanov. And if Omar was here, he would tell us if this is uh, Salem's uh, usual lines or no. We have this position. Well, well, well. Let's see what is happening on the third board. So, bishop b5, g6, castle, bishop g7, rook e1, and e5. Nezmedzino of Rosolimo. In the Sicilian defense. Uh, there is a line in this line where uh, white is uh, capturing on uh, c6 and and then it transforms to different lines like let me try to show you like bishop g7 white can capture black has two options capturing with the b pawn or d pawn both are possible and then it leads to a theory, but here white decided to play with the rook e1 and black played e5. Why e5? Because after knight f6, uh, there is this line with the c3, let's say d5, not yet, uh, let's say castle, d4, d5, e5, and knight e4. And uh, the knight looks very, uh, let's say, not protected in the central square because it has no, no place to go. But in fact, it, no one can attack it yet. So this knight needs to move to attack it. And when it attacks it, uh, the knight can try to run away. Because, uh, for example, from where, where to take this knight to prepare f3 move. Not that easy. Well, after e5, uh, white actually captured bishop e c6, and I think it is going to be played d takes on c6. And later, black is trying to convert the knight through f6, castle. Yeah, it was taken with a d pawn, and we're still in a theory. We are still in the theory. It's going to be an interesting game. On the first board, uh, 
guess we stopped at this moment. Uh, bishop g2, d5, right? Queen b3. And yeah, we're still in the opening, but I, I cannot not mention that actually Artemiev is spending way more time than international master Suleimanov with the black pieces. Probably there was some kind of a surprise for the for Artemiev. He's spending uh, quite time. He already spent uh, eight minutes for five moves. And black is playing faster and faster. Okay, we have new moves in the game. Uh, Raja Ritvik against uh, Fedasiv and Bishop E7 was played, Bishop D3 and Black captures. Uh, yes, uh, this is still a theory. And in this kind of positions, uh, usually the Black's main problem is the Bishop on C8 and Black is trying to play A6 and C5. Let's see if Black is actually going to make it or not yet. After b5, okay, let's say uh, we don't know the theory, we can just check ourselves. There is bishop b3, bishop d3, both moves are possible. And after each move, a6 is going to be followed. We can try to check out, for example, bishop d3. Uh, well, black can start here with bishop b7, uh, short castle, and short castle, black is not in a hurry with the a6, rook c1, and it's going to be followed with the a6 with the idea to play c5, and of course white is going to try to stop it, let's say white can play here a4, and after a4 black has moves, if I'm not mistaken, rook c8 is the main move here. Queen e2 and, and now b4. b4 works. Uh, let's say knight e4 or a2. Well, let's say, let's say white plays a uh, passive move, knight a2. Yeah. Well, black can just play a5 with the idea of c5. Uh, but what if uh, white captures, let's say, bishop f6? Knight f6 and tries to play knight e4. Captures, captures, and still black doesn't have this move c5. Well, white is basically doing everything to stop this move c5. Bishop d6 and rook c2 and... Okay, I think I, think I went uh, too deep into the theory. So let's just stop on this position and uh, white is still thinking. Okay, let's uh, see what happened in the game. Uh, Kobalia against Atah Atahan, and uh, as predicted, uh, yes, Nidorf was played. Uh, bishop e3, e5, knight b3, bishop e7, f3, bishop e6, queen d2, h5, long castle, knight bd7, king b1. Rook c8, bishop g5, b5, and a3 was played. Yep, a3, castle, h4, and rook e8. Uh, what I can say is that both colors, both sides are playing quite fast, and this can be kind of a preparation. Yeah can be and probably white can have the idea bishop e2 with the idea g4 trying to create some attack on the king side uh, 
as we know, we can see the opposite-sided uh, castles. And what is the rule saying? Uh, if you have the opposite-sided castles, try to attack on the other side. And here I think this is what is happening. So bishop e2, g4, but of course black is not going to just be waiting. Black can uh, try to create an attack also, like queen b6. Let's say g4. And can black play b4 here? Or not yet? Well, maybe should be two. Let's just go very fast again. G4. Is b4 possible or capturing? Yeah, maybe capture, capture, and then b4. So again, it's, it's the game where the game is played on both flanks and white is trying to create an attack on the king side, black is trying to attack on the queen side where the king is located, the white king. So it's going to be a very both-sided uh, game. And we can say that every result is possible in this kind of positions. Shall we check the game board number nine, Matlakov against Asaubayeva? And what happened in the game, knight bd7, queen c2, rook e8, captures, captures, and bishop e3, and a knight g4. Knight g4, shall white give up this bishop or no? This is going to be the main question, I guess. If uh, our viewers have some ideas about these positions, you can help me a little bit because uh, I don't like giving up bishops, so probably I would not give it up. But okay, the last move was played bishop e3, and it will look a little wrong to take the bishop back, but I think I wouldn't give up this bishop for this knight for now. Let's say bishop d2, and what can be played here? What kind of ideas uh, black has? Uh, well, we have to decide where to uh, develop this bishop, maybe b6. Oh, actually, bishop d2 was played in the game, yeah. Bishop d2 was played in the game, and now this knight is going to be under attack, but uh, black probably has to develop this bishop with b6, Bishop b7, later to decide where this knight is going. But not easy to say, because everything can be played. But of course now, let's say if uh, in this position, uh, eventually black knight goes to f6, then white is not going to play bishop e3 anymore, because uh, we can say that we have the same position, but the bishop is already developed, and the next move will be rook d1. So after bishop d2, b6 looks more logical, trying to develop the bishop on b7. c6 was played in the game. And it was uh, played quite fast. Is it some sort of a theory? or Because now rook d1 looks very good. Well, c6, uh, the idea is that first of all, the knight is limited by this pawn, and second of all, uh, the queen gets this nice square on c7, so c6, interesting, and knight a4 was played very fast again. Yeah, I have a feeling this is an opening that I don't play, and both uh, colors know how to play in these positions. Knight a4, is this a theory? A4, knight b6, and c5. Maybe. Because uh, I don't know if knight c5 is an idea or no. Knight c5, what can black play? Say knight b6, knight c5, queen c7 maybe or queen e7. Oh, 
Okay. Ninety four and black is thinking. Shall we go to the game board number four to see what happened there? So this is the another uh, Nidorf that we were checking and it was gone to the other line where white castled on the king side and the position look looks equal. The position looks equal. Let's say how else white can play. Okay, first of all, white will try to put some pressure on the d6, but uh, for example, if black wants to, they can capture bishop d5. And after capturing, we know that uh, we're trying to put a piece on d5 and not a pawn on d5, because then you can feel the weakness of d6. But now the d6 pawn is no longer a weak pawn, and it's not very easy to attack it and create some kind of an attack. After castle, black played the rook c8. Black didn't want to take uh, to capture on d5, and making the d6 uh, pawn a not weak pawn anymore. Rook c8, and uh, can white play here now c4 or take the knight back? Maybe c4. And maybe black was just waiting for the white to play c4. And then, and then maybe capture bishop d5. I'm not sure about this move though. Captures and there is this move, queen c7. Let's say rook c1. And the queen is going to hide on the b8. Now the rooks are connected to each other. Which is kind of, a, oh yeah, c4 was played. c4 was played in the game. What other moves black has here? What other moves Black can have here? Is there a move like B5? B5, let's say captures, captures, and if white queen captures on B5, I wanted to take my pawn back, knight e4, but uh, white has two passed pawns. b5, yes, maybe b5. After b5, what else white can play? White has to capture or... Maybe I don't. I, I can capture, capture, but not capture on b5 now and uh, try to play some other move. I do want somehow to protect e4 and attack b5. Is it going to work now or no? Rook AC1, Rook FC1. Well, after C4, Black has uh, nice options, we can say. I like both, to be honest. Uh, capturing on D5 and uh, getting rid of this weakness on D6, or not capturing on D5 and trying to play B5. B5 looks good, yes. Yeah. I see, I see in the chat uh, B5, and I like B5 myself. I don't know if I would play b5 or no, but in the game, maybe, maybe I would. If is there any other interesting game that you would like to check, just let me know and we're going to go there. Uh, shall we go to the game? Okay, this game is going quite fast, we can say. Let, let's start from beginning to remember. Yeah, Karokan. Okay. Uh, this is a theory. Knight c6, knight a4. 
queen a5, c3, c4, and b4, bishop b4, wow, wow, okay, okay, I wasn't ready for the peace sacrifice so soon, but... Yeah, bishop b4, it has to be some theoretical move because black didn't spend any time. Short variation. Well, let's check. Bishop b4 was played. C takes on b4. Knight b4 and knight c5. Knight c2, double check. Discovery, double check. Knight c2, nice move. Knight c5, was there any other move? Because, okay, let's say if white plays here castle, it's not possible because bishop c2 will be played and white will lose the knight. After knight b4, knight c5. Knight c5 is the only move, probably, because it was also played very fast. And when it is played very fast, I can guess that it is, uh, they know the ideas and moves and knight c2. Discovery double check, a very beautiful move. We know that there is no way to hide with the king from the dis discovery double check and the king has to move. And now black is in a hurry to grab the exchange. Knight a1, queen a1, and queen b5. Well, I have a question here. Can't black play b6? Okay, after b6 there is knight b7, queen a6, and knight d6, and white is has to have an advantage. Queen b5 was played instead of b6, and after queen b5, white played a4, and, and wow, and another move. Well, I wasn't expecting this to happen. I don't think this is a theory anymore, but uh, apparently black has a choice to keep the queens or exchange the queens. And Black actually went to exchanging the queens. Queen b1. White has to capture, captures and king e1. Well, uh, what about knight, BD7, knight b7? If white is trying to capture this pawn on b7, what can black play here? What's the idea for black? Okay, rook b8 kind of a moves will not work because I can just give a check knight d6. King somewhere, let's say king uh, f8, and I can go with the king out with the g3. And okay, black has the passed pawn, but is it enough? Is it enough? Well, black still has... Uh, I mean, wh why does piece up? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. It's two pieces against rook. And the c4 passed pawn. So it's uh, two pieces against the rook and the pawn. g3, some unequal uh, material and... Well, I, I still wonder why it didn't capture this b7 pawn. It's, it's an extra pawn, right? Because right now, uh, white has two pieces against the rook and two pawns. Rook and two pawns. I pr prefer having uh, two pieces against the rook and a pawn, not two pawns. Well, king e1 was played. I, do, I don't see any move after knight b7. If someone in the chat will see any move, feel free to let me know. Knight b7. It's, it's a free pawn. Omar will be like, why are you taking the pawn? But I still like taking this pawn. And because I, I have these knight squares on d6, on c5, to cover up, uh, to put my knight in. And uh, I would like to play in there. I would like to play in there. Well, king e1 was played. Knight e7, king d2. The king is in a rush to stop this pawn and attacking the bishop, well, bishop g6 and knight h4. White is still not in a hurry to take this pawn. 
Yes, uh, so the idea in fact is that uh, if we take the pawn then we don't have time to bring the king to d2 and uh, white needs the king closer to the queen side because otherwise I was taking my king to g3 and king g2. King e1, knight e7, king d2, bishop g6 and knight h4 and long castle and long castle and here we are we have this position white has two bishops two pieces against rook and two pawns one of them is a passed pawn and the rook cannot enter to b1 because this bishop is protecting it but this bishop will be gone very soon and white will have the two bishops Is it enough? Is it enough where the black pieces are going to go? Because, okay, uh, c4 pawn is a passed pawn, but it's not moving anywhere. This bishop is a very important bishop. It's going to be gone soon. And maybe b6 will be played somewhere. b6, there is knight a6. It's not that easy. It's absolutely not that easy, and it's white to play. Let's say, what happens if I capture? Uh, capture, and can I try to bring my rook to b1 to attack the pawn on b7? And I wanted to play h3 here, with the idea of rook b1 attacking the b7 pawn, but b6 looks natural, knight a6, and maybe king b7. Well... It is a complicated position. So knight h4 and uh, long castle. And black didn't spend any time. You, we can see that black uh, player Abisalimov has uh, 1 hour 29 minutes and 54 seconds, which means that he almost didn't use any of his time. So he was prepared for this. Interesting. Black is playing confidently. White is uh, still thinking. You know, the eval bar thinks it's equal, but somehow in this kind of positions, it's very hard to evaluate the position as equal. Because calling these positions equal uh, doesn't suit the position. Two pieces against rook and two pawns, and everything can happen on the chessboard. White with two bishops. Well, it's always easier to say the position is equal and move on, but in fact, the position is very complicated. But black is not spending any time again. Well, we will be back to this game and let's go to the first board to see what is happening in the game Artemiev against uh, Suleimanov. Queen b3, we stopped at this moment. Bishop g7, uh, knight c3, black captures on c4, queen captures, castle, knight f3, bishop f5, castle, and knight bd7. So King's Indian defense and, well, the side that is thinking a lot here is Artemiev. He, uh, he spent uh, 20 minutes on 9 moves and we are on move 10. And we shall remember that there is no increment after the 40th move, so the players have to use their time way more accurately. But Knight BD7 and... Uh, How can white play e4? That's the question. Is white managing? The moment will white will manage to play e4, uh, they will get a nice advantage. But how to prepare it? Uh, rook e1 is one of the moves. What happens after rook e1? Let's say rook e1. Uh, knight b6 looks pretty natural. Queen b3 is my only move. Well, not only move, but it looks like uh, it has to be the move. And uh, it's a very typical idea here for black to stop the e4 because, as I said, if white will manage to play e4 here, then white is already controlling the center and it's going to give a nice advantage for them. But the typical idea here is knight e4. 
and black is putting its own piece on the square on e4, not to let white pawn come and take the center. And after knight e4, uh, the white has many opportunities. For example, well, d4 is kind of hanging now. It might be poisoned, or it might not. A very interesting idea. For example, a4. Let's check if bishop d4 is going to work or no. I don't believe in this move because I don't want black to give up the bishop on from g7 square because uh, without this bishop, the black squares for the black will be very weak. And with the beautiful bishop on c1, this pawn is, is not enough to... Is not uh, worth it, let's say. So a4, but just in case, just just to check, bishop d4, uh, yeah, knight d4, queen d4, and after bishop e3, uh, white, black is losing a piece, actually. Yeah, black is losing a piece. It's not only the black squares. Black is losing the piece. So castle knight bd7, rook e1 looks very natural. Again, knight b6, queen b3, and knight e4. And uh, I personally like to check the move, like knight h4. Uh, I want to take the bishop on f5. And if bishop captures on d4 now, because it's not hanging, no one is attacking it anymore. Uh, no, they are losing a piece. So knight h4. What can black play after knight h4? Maybe bishop e6. Queen goes to c2 and knight c3 is the only move. Not only move, but uh, only normal move. Uh, B takes on c3 and now this uh, pawn is very well pr protected on d4 square. e4 looks unstoppable at this point. Black has its own game. Black can try to play c5, attacking the center. And also, we have to mention this knight's outpost for the knight on c4 square. Still interesting. How can black stop? Uh, can, can black directly play c5? Because if c5 works, then uh, black is completely fine. c5, if I capture... Now this bishop becomes a monster on this diagonal. And c3 becomes the point where they can always uh, attack. Knight d7. d7 or d5, because here I can uh, lose my fear and capture another pawn on b7. Yeah, so Leimanov is uh, very well ready for the opening in this game. Uh, but okay, I mean, uh, can black just play knight d5 here? Or knight c4 even? Because after knight d5, uh, might be a move like rook d1, and this pin looks very dangerous. Maybe even losing. But if knight c4... I'm trying to make this c5 move work, but I still don't know how. Rook b8 and c6. Maybe black doesn't need to rush with this c5 movement, move and just prepare itself for it. Okay, captures and... There is actually another interesting move here. Let's say uh, rook c8. And if white captures the knight, there might be a move rook c3. Interesting move. 
maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's not that easy to say. But uh, okay, everyone, uh, we will take a very short break and then I will return with our international master Omar Newman. And don't go anywhere. We are coming back right away. See you soon. Welcome back, everyone, and uh, International Master Omar Newman just joined me. So good to see you back in the yes. studio. Uh, have you been in the playing hall today? Yes, yes. How was the atmosphere? Can you, can you tell us some uh, Yeah, news? okay, I meet uh, Salem before the round, take some photo, speak a little word. I wish him good luck. Yesterday we played battle, it was nice, also organized by... ADHS festival with the partners with a group of uh, UAE players so we have a lot of activity I mean here in Abu Dhabi chess festival so today maybe football huh? today is the football day it's so, so uh, good to hear ready play to play fun. football me <laughs> 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 maybe <laughs> never say never we'll see yeah, we have a question in the chat. How else can they see the live boards? Uh, I just want to say quickly that you can follow the chess games on every chess website we can say in every chess, chess platform chess.com chess24 also. chess24 follow chess uh, light chess everywhere Wherever you are You prefer to check them 
Okay, uh, Omar, as you just joined, uh, we have very interesting games happening today. And uh, this is a game on the first board, uh, Artemiev playing against uh, Soleimanov. Mm -hmm. And Black played knight bd7 very fast, and Artemiev is uh, thinking. Yeah, I was offering it's a still move to one. It's still preparation, uh, by the way, I think. Because I think this is some kind of uh, Salem playing this. So rook e1. Yeah, but and now there is my question: Why is White thinking so much if it's a preparation? Because it's prepar I think uh, maybe it's got surprised actually. Yeah. Maybe. So I think rook e1. The rook idea e1. is to play e4. Knight and now b6. No, no, I don't think so. It's not knight b6 or here. Or knight e4 right away. No, no, it's e5 here. There I is a move e5. I think it's e5. I cannot mm. play e4. And somehow e4 you cannot play because bishop e6. d5, let's check. Yeah. If bishop e6, d5, uh, you have knight b6 I in the end. I have knight b6, yeah. yeah. Something like this. Let's say captures, captures, and knight b6. Looks good. Yeah, black is okay, I, black as is I remember. Okay, yeah. So, but after e5, what you need to play? It's, I mean, uh, take us by force, I think. D5, I guess. Uh -huh. Knight G4. Okay. And now... Bishop G5, maybe? Is it a move? It could be, but I can play uh, Queen C7. Yeah. So, uh, maybe Queen B3. And this is pawn sacrifice, maybe. Yeah. Queen, Queen, C, Queen B3 uh -huh. and Knight E5. And which one? G4? Uh, G4, probably. Yeah. And Knight takes. Knight E5. And queen b7 and queen a5 with the idea rook fb8. Okay. And then you're gonna put the pressure uh, here, maybe knight c4. knight c4. Bishop so. is strong on this diagonal. Looks very interesting and tempting actually. But yeah. white played a4 after knight b7. So now, if it's now e5 is working or not, need to if be calculated. Is working or not? If captures, again, probably your idea, yeah, g4. g4. Maybe right now is more stronger. <laughs> so I don't know what's the difference now. If there is any difference. Uh, maybe maybe um, bishop g5 Still you like bishop queen g5. c7, right? Yeah, queen c7. I wanted to play knight d5 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe knight d5, mm -hmm. see. maybe queen, then queen b8, I can play or what? Queen b8, yeah, if it's protect possible. b7. Do I have bishop e7 or knight e5 will be taken? I will play knight e5, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Maybe bishop f4, but it's not... Uh, yeah, I will take. It's not one. keeping the pawn. Well, it's interesting. Trying to... Yeah, okay. I mean, this is main idea to play e5. So to not... Uh, to not lose this tempo. Play e5 immediately. Yeah. If it's work, work. Why not? But I think it's preparation already. I yeah. saw many times. After a4, black is calculating. Maybe he's trying to see if e5 is working, working or not. Yeah. Working or not working. So. So let's see. Maybe a table number two. Let's let's go through all the games. Yeah. Uh, so in the game of Fedosev, uh, it's still the opening. Also, uh, they played. Uh, Queen's Gambit, Bishop H4, Bishop B7, Bishop D3, captures, typical, and Bishop D3 was played, I stopped at this moment. Yeah. Bishop B7, castle, A6, Rook C1, and Rook C8. I guess there is also a move to start with the short castle with the black pieces. Yeah, but now the modern chess, they are play, pushing uh, Rook C8, yeah. then they are making castle. Yeah. So, uh, one more time, Black's idea here is to play c5, to open this bishop up, and then get an interesting game. And White's uh, main thing is to uh, somehow stop this c5 move. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, still, I think uh, it's not clear what, how to to say. Still in the opening, I think. Yeah. We can move to the next game because there is no clear idea. What the There's game. nothing much happening, and Hans Niemann Mock. Uh, okay, you probably know this opening. And well, I I know this then. <laughs> You know so a three a five, white wanted to play before, so what, like the right away stops it with mm -hmm. the a five, uh, d three and queen e seven. Well, I don't know this move, but knight bd two, knight f six, knight c four, knight d seven. Knight is trying to transform to e six. Two yes 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 right. So a four b six, h three and bishop a six. B3 and the uh, castle. Uh, yeah, as much as I saw white was also trying to play bishop e3, queen d2, forcing h6 so that black yeah. doesn't have a castle later. But somehow the moves were not working here and it wasn't. Yeah, normally those moves working with uh, when uh, there is a3, b4 all the yeah. time. Bishop e3, a3, b4, queen d2, I mean, threatening b4, threatening bishop at But not here. But not here. But Castle, okay. bishop g5, and we have this position right now. Okay. Then yeah. What to play? I guess uh, f6, because otherwise, what to play really? f6, and where the white bishop is going? Bishop e3? Or yeah, bishop, bishop e3. Bishop e3 has to be played. And can I somehow try to still bring my knights to e6? Uh, I still want to try, uh, but b6 is always hanging. And yes, okay, you need to protect this b6, mm -hmm. first of all. And then you try to to somehow, like, okay, rook b8, rook f, maybe. Because I don't see how white can create something in king's side, rook on e1, yeah? Yeah. Well, white doesn't have much because usually white is trying to play like knight h2, f4, but here even that idea is gone because rook is only one. And maybe black just can uh, slowly and technically start improving the position of the pieces, but uh, how to improve the position of the pieces? Yeah, problem is uh, for white, I don't know how he will play. Or, to, yes, as you said, to play f4. Or to pl try to play c3 somehow, c3 maybe. c3 b4. If b4, maybe. or could be d4 and yeah. if it's work. But okay, you need to be careful about uh, when knight coming to e6. Yeah. But currently bishop g5 is on the chessboard and Hans Niemann is thinking about uh, probably f6 or uh, running with the queen. Yeah, because any move, then he will go back bishop e3. Yeah. So we can see next Another board, game. I think. For me, more interesting. Salem's game. Salem game, game but okay. Let's go to Salem's game. Okay. Uh, so, oh, okay. We, we very quickly, huh? Very quickly reached the end game. Ah, okay. I was still in the opening, and uh, suddenly they are in the end game. Okay, I'm playing this. Mm -hmm. And okay, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. He has such idea. Knight g6, knight f3, idea is g3, h4, to push. Mm -hmm. uh, h4. He pushed. F6. Yes. Knight yeah, f4. Can we go back just to explain this, this position, yeah? Because mm -hmm. it's not so easy we go back. Why? Uh, normally, can we go back one move? Yeah, sure. One move, or two move, two move. So here now, for example, now this is what happened at g6, knight f3. Uh -huh. uh, there is another move, which is, I think, uh, also, uh, uh, the move should be to move knight, where to move knight, or g6, or c. Uh, why I think is g6 is the right move? Because uh, you need to have some pieces in the king's side. Because knight c8, I think he will play knight f uh, knight f3. For example, knight c8. How how to white will play? Because knight will be out two yeah. knight. So knight f3 or even g3, it doesn't matter. 
بيشوب اي 7 اند ناو فور اكزامبل جي 3 كاسل And there is always no F6 for some reason because F6 right now I think knight f4. Knight f4. Yes, F6 right, right. now is knight. It's uh, uh, white to play. Knight. Uh, I mean, I in any way, any position in general. F6 is yeah. knight uh, f4. For example, knight. Uh, uh, let's say uh, h4. I played. Mm -hmm. F6 right F6 now. Knight f4. f4. Always. Always. E6. This. This problem with e6. So knight yeah. g6 is, pro is protecting this square on f4. Mm -hmm. And uh, white continues. Uh, I mean, let's say just one move back after uh, h4. Yeah. Knight b6, let's say. And bishop g5. And this position is, I mean... Uh, and if I capture, you're going to capture with the h pawn and with the attack the king g2. King g2 or rook For example, the rook c8, yeah. let's say. Here. Yeah, okay. I don't want to take immediately. Yeah, I wanted to show. Just, just to show. I mean, yeah. even to King not G2 touch. Maybe? King G2, maybe? King G2, not touch anything. Yeah. Queen D7. For example, you can play just uh, Rook C1, for example. Rook C1. Okay, if he, uh, let's say, he played, uh, let's say, uh, Let's say bishop g5. You can take with pawn, you can take also with knight, I think. Bishop g5? I, I still like to take it with the pawn. Yeah, you can Trying play to this. create this attack on the h file. If not, let's say he played h6. Let's yeah. say. How to continue? You mean here? Yeah. Uh, instead of capturing on g5, like uh, captures? Yeah, capture. Uh, or even you can go back here or sometimes. Yeah. Bishop f4. I would like to keep Bishop f4, I think, because bishop. of not allowing knight c4. Maybe there will be some idea like with knight h2, knight, knight g4, f4. Yes, maybe. yes. Queen but D2, also, capture. But also, I mean, take on e7 is not uh, not so bad move. Yeah. I mean, you can take on e7 and still continue yeah. by g4. Uh, Let's show fast, like uh, c1. Let's say h6, we can take. Uh, take with the queen, for example. Knight, okay, knight. And, and still you can play, for example, queen d3, let's say. Queen d3. I still believe with the bishop f4, it's more... Yeah, yeah. but I mean, even those positions with the changing two rooks, mm -hmm. and in black have the problems with them, always with the king side. Knight yeah. f4, g4, g5, is all, always it's under pressure, you know. Yes. Well, uh, shall we show what happened in the game, knight yes. g6? Knight g6, okay. Knight f3. h4, as you said, was played. f6. And knight f4. Knight f4. Bishop f4 captures. And knight e5. But somehow they changed too many pieces, pieces right? Yeah. Okay, e6 but is. But maybe a it's all, almost fours, yeah, maybe. Yeah. He prepared probably. So, but okay, why, why it is better here? Okay, one. Queen d2, okay, it's a very simple position, yeah. yeah? E6, E6 is the weakness, and uh, yeah. white is going to put as much pressure as possible on this E6 pawn, and rook c4. But uh, what to do with this? Okay, rook e6 is one move. Okay, rook e6 should be played uh, without thinking even. I let's don't know. Let's rook e6, uh, queen, queen d4, okay, and we keep move. the queen. Can we? Or you want to exchange and rook e7? Need to think a little bit. Okay. I have queen e2, but I don't believe. But okay, what? Uh, yes, I can take, yeah? I can take. Take maybe rookie two, preparing rookie seven. There's but always okay, there is, seven. There is rook d two, also yeah. counterplay. But why don't you like uh, keeping the queen like queen e two? I don't like that. Is uh, this f two always hanging? So he will play. Let's say. He uh, played rookie six, by the way, in the game. Yeah. So queen. I d4 think he should go to the end position. game. Take, take. Take, take. And rook e7, rook e7, rook d2. So maybe we start with the rook e2. Uh, he took queen d4. Yeah, queen d4. He will take, I think, queen d4. Yeah. Is, this is right, I think. 
Uh, white doesn't have a big option. It's either queen e2, two. queen e3, or capturing. Or maybe uh, rook e2. Maybe I just start with rook e2 and... Uh, maybe. Why not? If it's working, yeah. Also rook e2. Nice move, actually. Why yeah. not? Because now if black captures the queen, the rook captures, d5 this, is hanging. This, uh, this pawn will fall down. Rook e7 soon. is a threat. Yeah. And also rook e2, I, I agree. Maybe or take or uh, rook e2 mm -hmm. is the right move. So there is rook e2. Yeah, I think white yeah. is better. It's clearly better. Yeah. Okay, we can go to the next. Well, let's go to the board number four. And uh, I stopped on this position. It was played a knight dwarf opening. And here, yeah, I was offering b5 and it was played in the game. Captured, captured, rook fc1. Maybe bishop d5 something. Bishop d5, yeah. captures, captures, and captures. And uh, looks like black doesn't have a problem here, no? Or maybe they do, but not as much as before. What I think is white. I mean, white, white has white no, almost no weakness here. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe B5 only d5, is but b5 is hanging now. Yeah. Maybe queen a8. Well, no, I, I changed my mind. I like white's position. <laughs> <laughs> What's the black's idea? Black's idea is to take on b5 and give you the speed d5, mm -hmm. <laughs> and what was to uh, pass pawn. Well, the queen a8 was played. Maybe after queen b5, I can be playing risky and take a2 okay, pawn. Yeah, I can take queen can a2 take. and with a threat of like, let me just show it very fast. Uh, b2 is hanging, rook b8 is a threat. A threat so, yeah. so after queen a8, what to play? Yeah? Maybe a3? Yeah, up the d5 as you said. Let's say a3, but queen d5. But then b5 is hanging. Well, how you want to take it? That's the question. Because you have, you can take the queen take on b5. You can take a b5 right away. Queen b5, I think. Why not? Okay, queen b5. Let's say rook b8. So take take then. Because this knight is hanging, yeah. Takes, takes. Uh, this is hanging. Yeah. This is mainly hanging, but I want also to exchange this knight with this bishop, so to uh, get rid of the advantage of the pair of bishops for white. Okay, can we go back? Sure. Maybe. Queen eight. It's the real threat. I'm this thinking one. something. Um, I saw some interesting line. Uh, rook c6, queen a2, mm -hmm. rook a1. Oh, I don't have a rook. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I don't have a rook. Okay, a3 is the right move, looks like. a3, queen d5. Maybe you just need to... Here I have two ideas. Or to take immediately and take on b5. Mm -hmm. Or uh, to play somehow knight a5 and to, to have this square on c6. Is it so important? Maybe an a5. You will take the b5 pawn later? Think, yeah. I'm still worried about the pawns. Uh, you don't like <laughs> to give pawns, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but okay, I can take on d5 and take on b5. This is, uh, should be enough, yeah? Takes and bishop b5. Yeah, okay. Rook b8, a4. Or I, want, I want to start capturing here. In bishop d7. I have bishop. Okay, yeah, I will bishop take Bishop d7 is possible. And after bishop d7, maybe. But I will take an e3, it's more easy, maybe. Yeah. And Should after rook b8, you wanted to play a4. Yeah, maybe I will play bishop a4. d7 is even possible now, but. Okay, a4, a4. a4 I is want simple. to play knight a5 now. a4 is simple. Well, uh, I still, I still prefer the white's position after, uh, but a3 has to be played. There is nothing better, I guess, right? Because giving up this a2 pawn means that we're going to give up also this pawn. 
Um, okay, A3 should be but yeah. this one. Okay, we can go, we can... Next game. Next game. Yeah, this was the position we stopped on and uh, it so was played h3 Karatan. and king c7. It's also yes, Karatan. I have a question. I have a question. Uh, so this was this line, probably you mm -hmm. know, bishop before, captures, uh, knight c2, takes. And my question was, why white is not capturing like knight b7 right away? Because it looks safe. I still continue my idea. Because white never captured this pawn on b7. So white has two pieces against the rook and two pawns. Now a rook and one pawn. Makes some sense though. Why not take a pawn, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you like if you ask me, I, I have to ask this question. Later I will play g3, king g2 and... Yeah, but not easy because I have a bishop e4 all the time. 96. Okay, let's start with the threat. Rook, rook, rook b8. b8. What's going on? Because rook b8, maybe I want we'll to play check. Check, okay. I have problem where to put now. King e7, I don't have much. Well, king e7 and here I want to play uh, g3. Okay, let's say bishop c2, king g2. Mm -hmm. Okay, bishop c2. Yep. King uh, g2. Rook b1. Rook b1. Because I think uh, to change one rook, maybe. In but I will take also this pawn here. How? Let's say I'll cap. Okay, I don't. Capture, capture, this knight and will. check. This knight will not go out. Yeah. Okay, king d7. Uh, I'll try. Knight a7. Bishop c2. Bishop c2. Oh, you're forcing me the a5 so that the knight is going to be stuck there. Yeah. No, That's I don't tricky. believe that uh, this position is okay for for white. If I change uh, this rook, it will be much easier. Especially right now, I think I'm I am okay. I still have an idea. I want mm -hmm. to play knight b5 here. So I should take you immediately. Should take or and because otherwise I'll play knight c3. Also, I can play knight e7. I <laughs> don't think that there is a problem yeah. even. If okay, I, take. I will take. I'm, I I'm like play, you. I will take one. Okay, it's not so big problem, I think. Okay, I can play knight h6. I don't care. You don't care. You're ready to... To give everything. To give so take, everything take. If you want, take this. We, can, we have to check this line, I think. Uh, captures. No, I think this is Captures, not knight f7, rook c8, I yeah, guess. rook c8. And if white continues Maybe rook, to rook be... Maybe rook b8 is better. Rook greedy. b8. Rook okay. b8 without... I don't want to give you tempo. b8. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going very quickly. being greedy. No. Hell no. <laughs> I mean, okay, c C3, how you can stop. Okay, and if C3, I cannot stop. That's the whole fun part. But I'm ready to give up uh, bishop. Okay, give me bishop, all. C2. <laughs> I have to capture. Of course, what? Capture. But okay, the yeah. here you are, you are playing only for... Uh, for draw. For draw, yeah. I mean, black is better here. I agree, I agree. Well, so... Okay, uh... That's why I think if, uh, if uh, uh, black managed to change one rook, I mean the, the other rook, an edge, yeah. then there is no danger. So, so white, uh, that's why I didn't so take So that's this why one. my idea was all on to change this rook. Yeah. Because only dangerous those mm -hmm. two pieces should be with the rook yeah. to attack king. So that's why I think he didn't take. Why well, didn't want to exchange the rook? So, well, we have a nice explanation. King d2, and even here he didn't take the pawn because because well, probably rook b8 uh, again. Rook b8 and king d7. Yeah. It will be activity by the rooks. The b file is a very important file for the black pieces, and 
black uh, white is not ready to risk the file mm. for a pawn and long castle and h3 and king c7 this is our current position that we have and it's white to play white is still not even capturing the bishop on g6 because it's uh, it's theirs anyway mm. so what even here is not so easy i don't know what to play so he wants to play king c6 and b6 Yeah, I don't know. I need to to try to open something here. Yeah. So what to do? King c3, b6 check. B6 yeah. is coming. Knight c6, b6 maybe even because I want to play king b7 after b6. So knight c6 is a, is a real threat? Maybe. Uh, I think if he wanted to play knight c6, he would have played instead of king c7. Okay, king I c3. Guess. Let's continue. But I think this is his idea. the position. So what I am missing? Something. Maybe b6 immediately. Or maybe knight c6. c6. Maybe, no, knight f6 doesn't work. Maybe b6. B6? Well, I mean, if uh, black wanted to play b6, he could play a little yeah. bit earlier. But no? maybe knight c6, I think, yeah. Okay, knight c6. What do you want to play? I don't know. This the position is so sharp, I don't know what <laughs> to play. Maybe take on g6. I should take this. This is very dangerous, bishop. I have to capture with the... Which one? Uh, rook b1 and rook b1 b6 has to be played oh, it not, doesn't have to be played but I feel like there is no harm from playing b6 ok knight a6 what else I have knight a6 and ok king b7 maybe you will try knight c5 again so do I have to go king c8 again Okay, I think to how to continue it's so difficult. How to continue this? With white pieces, it's uh, the center is closed. Okay, white it's has only two way to, to to push somehow. Okay, yeah. but I don't know how. White has to try to open the position. But I think maybe maybe was rook b1 was not right. Okay, now I understand how to play. Maybe h3. Maybe okay. you don't need to rush with knight g6 because... No, I think I should take this. Knight g6 is very important. I think You can take it any time, no? No, no. I think I have good fe feeling that I should take... <laughs> well, I would like okay. to take the bishop. Maybe to maybe to, to start to take, because I don't think that yeah. b6 with king b7 is so dangerous. Take, take, and maybe h4, yeah? Here, I want to... h4, h5, trying to... No, h4, g3, just to... To, to make uh, to make it this way, yeah. But maybe now B six King B seven and B six King B seven Knight B four. Uh, well, B six King B seven Knight B four. Is it so dangerous? Take take. A five. I can go King B five. <laughs> 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 it's a joke, but I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, why not? I don't know. Maybe, maybe here is. Uh, can I play knight b8? It's so stupid move forward. <laughs> I want to play b6. Yeah, to catch. I know, I know. Okay, but knight a5 maybe. a5, then knight c6 again. Uh, something was. Yeah, knight g6, h takes on g6. Okay, knight b8. Try, try. Because, okay, this is all working or not so I want to play b6 a5 I have to play a5 actually and, they play knight, knight g6 takes and rook b1 yeah that's why may maybe maybe rook b1 was what I played it was right to just yeah. stop the, this idea knight b8 and uh, and b6 here knight c6 and black is better should be yeah knight c6 and a5 pawn is falling down 
I guess, yeah. So maybe maybe uh, what yeah, they played is right. Take, yeah, but I have you see I have good feeling that you need to yeah, take this. You, uh, I need to take this rugby one. Rugby one, and uh, well, well, like has only like two options: P six or rugby eight. B6. Rook B8 seems very passive. And yeah, because uh, then you don't have yeah. threat B6. So B6 has to be played. And as we checked, there is uh, like knight A6, maybe king B7 here, knight B4. And is there a chance that uh, black will play A5 somewhere? No, A5, then knight A2, knight C3. So he yeah. will not play uh, A5. B5 is a nice outpost. Yeah. And knight C6 now. And after knight C6. I'm trying to. Okay, what I th uh, I think uh, how to to play such position, maybe king c3 to try to locate. Let's say. Maybe I can block with yeah. a king. I don't know. So why. white is basically just standing because black can also not break through. How black is going to break through f6? Then I play f4. Yeah. Then it's gonna give some opportunities for the white. Mm. King C3. Uh, rook B8 was played, by the way. Black played Rook B8. So he will want to play maybe King. Or he will put pieces. Knight C6, Knight A5. And King C6. I don't know. But okay, maybe. let's say w if White want to do something, should be with, uh, I think, ideas by, first of all, to stop for counter playing King yeah. que uh, que Queen side. Then try to push, let's say, somehow. Bishop f1, f4, g4, yep. like this maybe. Maybe I put then bishop f2, h4, bishop f3. Okay, if there is no counterplay, then I will play like this. But first of all, put pieces the right way. Maybe king c3. Yep. Then, then we will see. Because black doesn't have b6 anymore. Yeah. And uh, this knight is so annoying on c5, to be honest. I mean, for the black player. Yeah, it's so... Maybe it's so deep idea in an opening, so I need... Sometimes computer not understand this yeah. for long term. Well, shall we move to another game? Yeah. Uh, well... Here we have opening. Also, kind, kind of, of Karkon, a lot of Karkon. A lot of Karkon. Karkon today. We even had a London today. I was like, well, okay, this game is actually interesting. Uh, it was Nidorf, Bishop e2. I was saying Bishop e2 with the idea of g4, Queen b6, g4, hmm. captures, captures, and b4. And uh, I was checking this position and I was thinking, like, well, it's going to be a long game. But maybe black is a little bit faster, maybe. I'm not saying for sure. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not experiencing yeah. this uh, opening. It's a, it's a three-result game. Everything can happen in this game, uh, I think. And how to attack with the white pieces, h5? Well, I mean... Uh, but what are you going to do with this knight on b3? Knight I mean, C1? should should be should be faster. I mean, why should be faster? How but to start? How? But how? That's that's the question. How? I mean, this Grand uh, Master Kubali always have a strange position. I mean, <laughs> in Sharjah, here, everywhere, the same thing. I don't know. Maybe maybe should take yeah on F six and try to push. Well, let's say you so capture. Take, take. I capture with the knight. And okay. And G5. Probably maybe. G5, knight G5. E4. Well, knight E4. So I can take. Take, take, and bishop D3. D3. I'm in time? I don't think so. I, I also don't think so. Well, let's say uh, black needs to play uh, accurate still. Like queen C6. Because my next move might be E4. And. I don't know. But I, I don't feel there is attack now. Or maybe I can play g6 or no. Maybe there is nothing. Maybe there is no attack here. So I was trying to give yeah. a pawn for yeah. 
some the initiative. Black is, uh, yeah, okay, Rook H3 was played after Queen before just now. Okay, what is the idea? Bishop B3 or A5? Mm. Also A5. I, I like A5. I like A5. Let's say A5. And I want to open the B file and see what's going to happen next. I like black already. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was checking uh, the position and after B4 take stakes and Queen B4. I already was liking the black's position and it was actually played in the game. And A5. Uh, well, it's going to be a crazy game, I think. Or, or a fast game. It's either going to be a, some crazy game or a very fast game. It will be a crazy game. I yeah. Think. Okay, is there any other game we shall check uh, before going for a short break? Maybe Salem, let's Salem. check. Salem, let's what? check Salem's position. Uh, okay, so he played after... Uh, he didn't okay, change. Okay, he, he didn't exchange, he played queen, queen e2. Two. He wanted to keep the queens. Uh, rook c7 and rook e8. Mm, rook f7. Captures, captures, queen e6, king, rook f7, queen e8, and rook e2. Okay, he will play king g2 and he will see. King g2, and it's gonna be like rook c2 might be a threat to put the rook on c8. Yes. Uh, because now rook c2 doesn't work as queen d1. Maybe next move is going to be king g2 with the idea of rook c2 trying to overtake the advantage. I mean, already the advantage is for Salem, but... Uh, okay, now how to play, yeah? For black, it's so difficult. Black doesn't have a move. Uh, Maybe waiting move like A6 or G6. G6, G6, G6 yeah. Okay, King G2. King G7. H5. Maybe. Because, well, this rook is stuck on e2 and it's a problem. Yeah, maybe king g2. Okay. Can, could be Let's king g2, king idea g2. is f4. Uh, king g7? I like this idea, maybe f4 I will play one and day. And f4, okay, okay. Now, now I see what is happening, I like it. Mm, maybe, maybe this idea too. This is uh, for sure Stand advantage. Away, yeah. For sure, for for sure is a big advantage. I mean, to put king very near, maybe I will change queens when mm -hmm. it's when it's the right moment, probably. Yep. Okay, we can go. To we the can short. go to a short break, and uh, for our viewers, don't go anywhere. We will be very soon, uh, and with some more interesting positions. And I think they will already be near the time trouble. Yeah. Oh, okay, see you later. We are on break.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the 29th Abu Dhabi Chess Festival round 3. And we stopped on Salem's game and I was just in the playing hall. I was checking what was played there. And apparently uh, after g6 white played king g2, king g7, b3 and h5. And this was the current position happening there actually. And now it's white to play. White is trying to find some ideas uh, here, but, well, as uh, Omar said, White has a nice advantage, but how to convert this advantage to a win? That's not the easy part. But okay, White can try to find some ideas, like maybe Rook C2, trying to somehow, after this b7 pawn will be gone, to bring the rook to c6. But okay. Uh, Salem is currently thinking, I think like, uh, black doesn't have any idea to win here, looks like, because the only side that has an idea to win has to be white. Okay, position is equal. If uh, white finds a move, finds a move. If it doesn't find a move, it will not find a move. Uh, let's go back to the first board. And on the first board, after a4, rook c8, queen b3, queen b6, captures, captures, and rook e1. And uh, as Omar was offering, uh, e5 didn't happen. And uh, e4 is going to happen soon, but... Uh, we have to mention that black has an advantage of 40 minutes, which is a huge advantage for this kind of a game, especially that there is no increment after the 40th move. But uh, what can black play after rook e1, maybe knight e4 is going to happen, as we were checking earlier, to uh, occupy the e4 square with the knight. And I can see in the chat Suleimanov. Uh, if someone knows, uh, is Suleim, how close is Suleim enough to become a grandmaster? Because looks like his rating is already enough, and uh, with this game, he has to be very close to becoming a grandmaster very soon. Uh, after knight e4, white can play probably knight h4. Let's say knight e4, knight h4. And, well, uh, black has to decide what to do with this knight. And if white, uh, if black knight is capturing on c3, pawn will capture. And what to do with this bishop? Bishop goes to c2 maybe with the idea rook a8, attacking a4 pawn. Not easy to play after rook e1, but uh, if uh, black will allow this move e4, then some problems will appear. But okay, we can say that Suleimanov's uh, preparation was quite successful because from the opening, getting to this position with so much extra time is already a good uh, start for the game. I want to go to the game of uh, Ferociev because I saw that Maybe it wasn't this one. It was this one because I guess the one of the players had only 15 minutes left. No, okay, it wasn't here. I remembered which game was that. Uh, in the Fedosev games, uh, Fedosev's game, uh, it was played here after. Uh, yeah. So Bishop B7, Castle A6, Rook C1, Rook C8. Bishop f6, knight f6, and knight e4. And here black plays knight d7. Still trying to make this c5 move work. Uh, and after a4, black played castle, queen e2, and finally we have c5 on the chessboard. And uh, we can definitely say that black has some advantage and a nice game in this position after c5 because the bishop started to work now. Uh, black has two bishops, and even b5 is not hanging, c4 might be played later. It's a, it's a good position for black. Uh, but okay, how to continue with white pieces? 
Is there some tactical opportunity like capture, capture, and try to capture on C5? And after knight C5, let's say bishop captures on B5. Is this a move or no? No, there is knight D7. And and black is piece up. So it's not gonna work. After c5, capture, capture, uh, knight c5 doesn't work. Well, let's say knight c5, uh, sorry, uh, I meant capture, capture, and capture on c5. And after, I don't know, maybe rook c5, rook c5, bishop c5, and bishop b5. Okay, this might be an idea. Actually, white might be winning a pawn, but it's still too two pawns but this might be the only way to play here is there any other move after eight captures on b5 is there maybe oh black has c4 here so a takes on b5 is losing a pawn but after black pushes the pawn to c4 uh, we can check that uh, bishop cannot capture it because the knight on e4 is hanging so c4 is a nice move and black uh, is not losing any any material. Oh, Suleimanov got his uh, Grandmaster title this year according to his FIDE profile. Okay, because uh, in chess.com we had IM, so, but he already crossed 2500 rating and uh, I could believe that uh, he got his three norms, so congratulations. He's a GM, that's amazing. Well, back to the game, uh, we can just evaluate, like, black has a nice advantage here. We can, uh, we can say it for this position for sure, after black managed to push this c5 idea. Uh, by the way, for our viewers, if you have any preferred game to check out, just say it in the chat, and I'm very open to check any game that you want to check out. I want to find the game uh, where one of the players had only 15 minutes left and it was... Well, it wasn't here. Uh, okay, let's just continue our uh, boards. Uh, Hans Niemann position. Uh, bishop g5, after bishop g5 it was played f6. And after f6 bishop d2, rook a e8. So as we were discussing, black is trying to regroup his pieces the way that, uh, and wait, because white doesn't have much to do. Uh, the only ideas for white uh, were, okay, not the only ones, but the main ideas were like, when the rook was on f1 to play knight h2, f4, uh, later trying to push e5, but now everything is stopped and it's very hard to find this in this position any, any idea. Uh, bishop c5, rook f7, and rook b1. Maybe white will try to do some idea like bishop a1 or bishop d2, c3, trying to push b4, opening the queen side, but is it going to work or is it not going to work? Uh, I, it's very hard to say now. Uh, but the black played rook b8. Uh, I think this move was played to put the knight on d4 with the knight f8, knight e6, and knight d4, or knight f4 maneuver. This is a very possible idea for the black and very typical idea in these positions, in this structure. But uh, yeah, white played knight fd2, and yes, actually black played knight f8. Knight f8, knight f1, and knight e6, knight g3, and here, Black is still thinking because black has a choice to put the knight on d4, to put the knight on f4, maybe to leave the knight on e6 and try to find some other uh, possibilities before deciding where to put the knight from e6. But what else is possible here? Okay, knight d4 and knight f4 both are possible. Uh, f5 is not possible, what else? Maybe a move like an h5 might be possible. Uh, 
Or another idea can be to play queen c7, and after queen c7, bring the rook to d8, because we have this problem with this d b6 pawn, and we have to try to solve it somehow. Maybe a queen can come to protect this pawn, rook will come to d8, and then the knight will come to d4. Uh, well, queen c7 was played. Queen c7 was played in the game. Okay. And still with the white, it's not easy to play because all the squares are so well protected. We can, we can check like, okay, all the squares are protected here from the fifth rank and how to enter anywhere. Like the pawns are so well cooperating with each other in the pieces, but also if black wants to win the game, we'll have to try to break through at some point. And that's when all the interesting uh, stuff are gonna stop happening. Queen c7 was played, maybe white can try to play. What idea can be played? Queen d2, let's say, rook d8. f4 doesn't work, unfortunately, and maybe knight e2. Maybe knight, but this f5 possible after knight e2. Maybe no need to rush with f5 because e5 might become a weakness. Well. Uh, one more time I want to remind to our viewers that if you have any preferred game to check today, uh, I'm very open for it. Just say the preferred game in the chat and we're going to check it out together. Let's say black has an advantage, but uh, he has to have the technique here to to put the pieces in the right places, and that's what uh, Hans Niemann is doing right now. Yeah, this uh, board, uh, board number four, and you can see that black has only 15 minutes left. So castle, uh, we can check what happened here, c4, b5, captures, captures, c1, uh, and queen a8. After queen a8, white played rook c7. Uh, we didn't think about this move rook c7, but uh, queen a2, because we were actually afraid to give up this a2 pawn. We wanted to play here a3 uh, to protect the pawn. And uh, yeah, black could capture the d5. But here uh, the idea was to capture, capture, capture on b5 and have connected past pawns that on the a file and on the b file. But uh, white decided to play rook c7 and give up uh, this uh, a2 pawn. Uh, queen c2 was played. And now uh, white is, has a very nice threat. White wants to play rook a7 and trap this queen on a2 square. And the queen, has it a place to run away? Maybe uh, queen a6 is possible. But uh, black played rook a8. Uh, I still want to check what will happen after queen a6, maybe rook a7. Queen c8, take, take, and bishop b5. And uh, it will be hard to stop the b pawn from becoming a queen. Uh, queen c2, okay, rook a8. But maybe after queen c2, still queen a6, I still want to see how white was actually winning here. Maybe the chat can, the viewers can help me. Okay, rook a7, queen c8. Yeah, good to hear. Good to hear he's a GM. It looked very suspicious for me to see. I am. Uh, I will check on chess results. I, I'm sure, pretty sure in chess results we have. Yeah, in chess results we have a GM for Suleimanov. And yeah. So. So in chess results we have the right title. 
Uh, after queen c8, uh, white can actually play queen c6 here. And after queen c6, it is going to be uh, difficult for black to find a move here. Black ran out of the moves. Queen c6, wonderful. That's why black had to play rook a8 after queen c2. And white captures bishop b5 and bishop d8. And this is our current position. And white is thinking. Black is very lag in time. And, and just to remind, this is uh, till the end of the game. And well, the position is already very complicated. But uh, what happens after rook d7? Okay, white played uh, rook b7, but rook d7, trying to give up a rook for two pieces. Uh, Apparently it doesn't work because knight d7, bishop d7, and there is a very beautiful tactical move here. Very beautiful tactical move, queen b3. And after queen b3, there is rook a1, checkmate. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's be also beautiful that white actually saw this during the game, this queen b3 move, it's uh, very beautiful. Otherwise, of course, white would like to exchange this rook for two pieces, but it's not gonna work that way. Well, bishop b5, bishop d8, uh, bishop rook b7, and I think th this is the position we have now. Yeah, rook b7. And black is thinking. What to play with the black pieces? And what is the threat? I think the threat is now, okay, still white cannot capture on d7 because eventually after exchanging all the pieces on d7, uh, queen b3 will be hanging with the idea of rook a1 checkmate. And What to play with the black pieces? Is there any uh, threat that can be put or not really? Difficult position with the black. Uh, passed pawn on B file. All the pieces are kind of uh, squeezed and no space to play. Okay, we can say that white has a very nice advantage here. Yeah, white has a very nice advantage here. Uh, we can move to the next game and on the board five, this was our interesting uh, end game uh, that appeared from interesting opening line uh, with a peace sacrifice. Rook b8 and uh, bishop d1 was played in a5. Javohir can uh, stand uh, still, yeah. Let's check the game, what is happening in his game. Yeah, okay, so in the Sindarev's game, uh, what is happening is uh, Sindarev has 30 minutes more. Maybe that is the reason he's uh, walking so much during the game. 30 minutes is a big time advantage during the game. And okay, Sicilian, e5, has to be a line. I will just go very fast through the opening. d6. I don't believe in this kind of a structures because uh, where is the king going? Where is the king going? I'm not saying black has any problem now, but uh, still, I don't see where it's going to go. h5, g3, bishop g4. Well, this is getting more and more interesting. Bishop e6, queen e2. And long castle. White's king is uh, very, very uh, safe. h4, queen e4. King f7. And king b1, white doesn't have anything to hurry with, bishop h6, and f4. 
Okay. After f4, d5, queen a4, captures, captures, captures again. And what is happening to this king? The king is, uh, we call it a naked king, right? Well, not fully, but uh, knight f3, rook g4, okay. The position is very complicated, by the way. We have to mention this. Queen a5, shop d6, knight a4, c5 is hanging, queen e7 has to protect, and then bishop c5, knight c5, nice tactics, and knight g5, and knight g5, probably black uh, blundered this uh, tactical opportunity for the white, and knight g5, and uh, f6 is hanging, whatever black plays, the next move f6 is going to be hanging, and... Uh, what to play with the black pieces? Okay, let's say rook g5. It's gonna follow with uh, bishop f6. Bishop f6, beautiful. Brilliant. Okay, let, let's check one more time what happened here. After queen e7, black thinks that uh, c5 is protected, but it follows with knight c5. White is sacrificing a piece, and after bishop c5, white plays knight g5. Brilliant. Beautiful. And eventually the king looks to be punished because of its uh, fearless activity in the center with the pawns. And after every any move, uh, white is just going to capture bishop f6 or rook f6. Uh, let's say king e8, white can even capture knight e6. And after queen e6, I have many options. I can play rook e1, I can play queen c5. Queen c5 looks to be the safest, and the king in the center is absolutely so bad. It's so bad. Okay, it was played, bishop rook g5 and bishop f6, and... Sindarov, Sindarov is playing a brilliant chess right now. And that's the reason he cannot sit. He knows his position is winning. And he knows he uh, doesn't have to sit in front of the chessboard. He has more time, his position is winning, so he has all the right to be uh, walking around and uh, after this tactical opportunity. Well, queen f6 was played, queen f6, rook f6. And after king f6, queen c5, what is happening on the chessboard? Black has what material? Black has a rook and two pieces against a queen and a pawn. Rook and two pieces against a queen is more than enough to play the game, but not in this position because black's king is too open. It followed with the king f6 and queen c5. And they reached to this final position uh, that they have right now and uh, c6 is hanging uh, black has to protect c6 first of all but the thing is that the king is weak as i mentioned uh, of course white has to play accurate here but if, let's say if the king was in a safer position with a different uh, structure uh, rook and two pieces would be more than enough to fight against queen but not here, not here. Uh, shall we go back to uh, Salem's position to see what happened there? Okay, the queen transformed to c1. Somehow. And queen c1, what is the idea? Rook e7, rook f7, and later what? Uh, what will happen if uh, they exchange the rooks? Whose favor is it going to be? White or black? Or it's going to be equal and drawish? Looks like more equal and drawish. The position looks uh, drawish. Yeah, I don't see the advantage for the white right now. Uh, there is something, but... Uh, how to convert it to a real advantage, it's it's not easy. Maybe queen e1, I think the only way to 
to try to play for a win is exchanging the rooks right now. Because otherwise the queen and the rook are very nicely attacking f2. Well, now finally the white's rook can move actually. Maybe the idea is to play just rook d2 and uh, f2 is uh, protected or try to to throw the pieces behind the king through the final rank while the queen is protecting f2. Uh, Salim is trying to find some ideas here and uh, let's see if he will manage to or no. Uh, in the game uh, Matlakov against Asaubayeva Let's go back to the position where we stopped. Uh, bishop e3, knight g4, bishop d2, c6 was played, knight a4. We stopped after knight a4 and b6. b4, knight f6, c5. White is gaining some uh, space for now. Queen c7, h3, knight f8, captures, captures, bishop e3, knight d7, Rook d1, it looks like a stable advantage for white. Knight e6, knight b2, rook d8, rook d8. What black wants to do? Is there some move like c5 here or not really? I don't know, maybe uh, c5, but c5 or uh, why bishop b7 doesn't work now, trying to play c5. Well, let's check what happened. Rook d8, knight c4, and uh, c5 was played after rook d8. Yeah, it's c5 is the only, only opportunity for black to fight uh, and uh, develop the pieces the way uh, she wants to develop right now, so c5 and knight d6. And this is the current position. What to do with the black pieces? Do we want to... Actually, do we have a chance not to exchange this bishop with this knight on d6? Or we have to go for it? Maybe uh, black just has to go for it. Because uh, what to do? Let's say bishop a6 tries to exchange the bishops instead of a knight and uh, b5 is going to be played. And eventually the knight is going to exchange with the bishop. Bishop c8 and uh, we're not even sure that white will want to capture this bishop with this knight yet because they can capture it at any time, and why now? Maybe bishop c4 is a good move here. But let's not forget about this knight, knight square for the knight on d4. And is knight, knight d4 is uh, impossible right now because the problem of knight d4 is that f7 is hanging. Say so bishop f7. Is there something working here? King f8 and bishop d4 is possible. Yeah. So knight d4 is impossible. After knight d6, uh, black played knight df8. Very nice, yeah. White to give uh, white more space when... Uh, now white has to make a choice uh, with this knight. To take the bishop or not to take the bishop. What happens after capturing the bishop? Rook c8, with which one? A c8, let's say. And after this, let's say, um, can white create a passed pawn? That is the main question. Because now if b takes on c5, uh, black is, doesn't have to capture it with the b pawn and can just play knight c5. Yeah, knight c5 is very possible. Okay, knight df8. And 
I don't think white will uh, will keep this bishop on the chessboard because let's say if knight b5, queen e7, and black is bringing the bishop, and this bishop is gonna bring a lot of a uh, disturbance in the position. So knight d8, uh, knight c8 will be followed. Uh, let's go back to the Artemia Suleimanov game. And here, uh, yeah, uh, black plate knight d4, g4, and g4 is a nice move. Uh, knight c3 and captures the bishop. Knight d4, bishop h3, rook d8 and a5. Uh, Artemia played the high level chess after this moment, knight d4. And every move is just amazingly played, like bishop h3 and rook d8 and a5. Trying to open the position as much as possible because white has two bishops on the chessboard and opening the position is only a favor for white. a5, uh, let's say black captures, white captures. And what's next? What is happening next? Not easy. Not easy. Uh, Suleimanov is leading with the time, and it's not like White's position is a big advantage. But uh, not easy to play right now with the black pieces. Black has to make a choice, and for making this choice, it's going to spend some time. Uh, but still, uh, black's position is very fine. His time is very fine. Everything is very fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move forward. If you have any questions regarding to this position or game, uh, feel free. Uh, in Fedosev's game, after c5, b3, takes, 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 and knight d4 and b4. And b4 was played. Is black still holding the advantage? Has to, because two bishops, open bishop, uh, still black's position looks favorable, but uh, how to continue with the white pieces and what black wants to do? Maybe h3, y, h3. What to play? Maybe rook to fd1. This looks very um, natural. Rook fd1? The black scheme looks so easy. Queen b6, let's say. I just don't see what to do because I cannot move the bishop with this from d3. The knights are nicely standing here, but for how long? Uh, the rooks are on, on the open files, but this bishop, this bishop is just so powerful. Let's say white can try to exchange more pieces, uh, rook c8, rook c8 and uh, maybe queen d2, or knight d2, transform the knight to c4. Well, maybe knight c5, knight c4. And queen c7. Now black has a concrete threat to play e5. And uh, b3 might be hanging. Maybe not right now, but uh, at some point. Taking on d3 is another idea. 
Yeah. Has to be good for black. Black has to have an advantage. Uh, mainly because of this bishop. Uh, the bishop is like really, really powerful and Okay, uh, shall we move to uh, Hans Niemann's game to see what happened here? Uh, so bishop c3, rook f7, knight f8 was played, and queen c7, queen c1, and rook e8. Uh, black wants to play knight d4 and f5. This is my feeling about this position. But what to play with white? Maybe knight e2 just to stop this... Uh, knight d4 or knight f4 because if the knight enters there it's gonna be quite hard to play with the white pieces well what what will happen after knight e2 is f5 possible let's say captures captures and is there a move here Move this knight, maybe g3, and attacking e5. But uh, what if just black plays here knight d4? Maybe f4. f4 might be possibility here. Attacking e5 directly and... Uh, Black cannot capture it because e8 is hanging. The pawn is big. Pinned. Okay, black, white played bishop d2. White didn't play bishop uh, knight e2. And if knight d4? Is there again f5? This is, this is my main question. Can black play f5 directly? What happens after f5? Maybe capture, capture and knight h5 is possible. Forcing the bishop to go to h8 and try to start some kind of sort of a bishop c3 move maybe. Yeah, bishop c3 now, e5 is hanging. And if knight d4, there is queen g5. So knight d4 is impossible, but what to play? Maybe knight f8 trying to bring the knight to g6 queen g5 here well this shouldn't work yeah maybe queen g5 and f4 queen g5 could it cannot be a bad move knight g6 maybe even here is possible uh knight e5 bishop e5 and f4 but has to be calculated and f4 interesting does bishop d4 work here? Let's say bishop d4. Bishop d4. Rook e1. Rook e1. Black has to capture. Rook e8. Probably. Or knight f6 first. Rook e8. Rook f8. Rook f8. So not rook, a, rook e8. Uh, something else. Oh, simple. Uh, knight f6. Check. King g7 is impossible because knight e8. And if king h8, then beautiful rook e8. And it's going to be a checkmate very soon. If king g7, rook g8 checkmate. Well, uh, this was just a line if black tries to play f5. But if they don't try to play f5... Uh, uh, black will still take the time to improve the position of the pieces and then at some point they will try to play a five because uh, it's hard to play with the white pieces you don't know where to put the white pieces where is the knight from c4 going where the knight from g3 is going where the bishop on d2 is going okay maybe bishop on d2 will try to go to h6 and then try to push h4 h5 this might be an idea Okay, black played bishop c8. Black played bishop c8. Is bishop h6 a possibility here? My idea is that after bishop h8, I want to try to play h4 
and then h5 but it's hard to say whose favor is it going to be if someone in the chat has uh, is seeing some other moves please let me know so this was the game of uh, Hans Demon on the board 4 okay what changed here rook b7 uh, black plate knight f8 bishop c6 queen a6 and uh, h3 and knight g6 and it's white to play white has a big advantage white has a big advantage in uh, everything b pawn is a passed pawn there are two bishops White has to do a few accurate moves and it has to be it. What to play here with, uh, but how to continue here? Maybe knight d2, trying to start pushing before. Can we try this? Now I want to uh, push b4, b5, b6. Why not? Uh, faster, better. Practically for me, knight. Moving the knight from b3 looks very, very good for me. Even knight c1. Just to open the path for the b-pawn to start the march. Because after b4, b5, b6, uh, the rook will move b7. It looks like very, very forced. Well, not too much, I think, to say in this game. Yes, what is happening in this position? Uh, King C, rook b1, a5, we stopped here. Uh, bishop g4 and knight a5 and rook c1. And maybe b5. What happens after b5? This uh, b5 move looks very uh, intriguing for me. Eval bar, oh, knight a6, blunder. b5 is a blunder. Yeah, I was saying earlier, we cannot move the b-pawn yet. But the uh, trick is yet. Maybe king c6 trying to play b5. Because the knight from c5 is not moving. King c6 with the idea of b5. Maybe rook b1 has to be played. Well, there has to be b5 now. Evalbar says that her, there has to be something better in this position. But what is it? What is it? Evalbar is definitely smarter and sees everything faster. Maybe just b6. Oh, b6. b6 is possible. b6 and knight a6 and rook a8. And the knight is trapped. Well, I, I like this move, king c6. Very nice move. How, how white uh, wants to uh, save the knight? Knight b3. That's why he played rook c1. Knight c3, b6. Black has a nice advantage. Okay, the next game. And we didn't come to this game for a long time, I guess, now. Uh, sorry, I went too far. Still opening, uh, and uh, the game goes so slow, and queen b1, bishop f3, knight f3, b5. This kind of a looks like a position in the Karakhan. There is one line where... Uh, white can get this position and of course black wants to play before now and if uh, black manages to push before it's going to be a nice advantage for the black but before and queen c2 and knight f5 knight f5 bishop f5 and knight e5 well c3 is weak f5 is weak for now I still like the black's position. Let's say g6. I want to uh, bring some pieces to attack the c3 pawn. Of course, it's not going to be easy, but still. 
Uh, shall we check the game Kobalia because this game was very interesting and maybe after this game we will go for uh, another short break and then we will be back soon. So after rook h3, knight e4, knight e4, queen e4, rook e3, black is currently pawn up, bishop g5. Yeah, I saw the position in the, on the chessboard and it looked very interesting from the side even queen f4, g6 captures bishop d3 and queen g5. And to, is white fast enough to bring the pieces to the h-file? Is white managing to bring the pieces on the h-file or no? Uh, how to continue here? Uh, so complicated. Maybe, yeah, rook h1 was played in the game. Rook h1 and now white is threatening to play what? To play what? What happens after knight f6? Is there a move like bishop a6 maybe? But then why rook h1 first? Uh, this idea doesn't work. I was trying to make it work, but it will not. Like rook h3, queen d2. Bishop g6 and uh, black can just run away, king f8. So queen g5, there is move no knight f6 and it's going to be interesting. Okay, everyone, uh, we will take another short break and we'll be very soon. Let me remind you that you're following the third round of the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival 2023. And we'll be back after a very short break. See you soon.
Welcome back and today we are following the third round of the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival and we stopped on the game uh, Kobalia against Atahan and in the game was played Rook H1 and Knight F6, Bishop A6 and uh, Rook B8 and looks like after uh, the steel black holds the advantage it's not easy to play with the white pieces. Uh, let's start from the first uh, board again, uh, Artemyev against uh, Suleymanov, and in the game was played after a5, black captured on a5, rook a5, and knight df6, captures, captures, rook a7, and knight d6. Still, white the whole game uh, wasn't able to push e4, and this is a very very big plus, and it's white to play now. And uh, Artemyev is thinking he has only six minutes on the clock. Is there a move, Bishop f4? Bishop f4 trying to uh, capture the knight, and then the pawn on b7. But is it going to work or no? What can black play after bishop f4? It was just knight fe4, uh, replacing the position of the knight. How to improve white's position? It looks like easier to play with the black pieces. Any predictions maybe from our viewers uh, what will happen in this game? Okay, it was played bishop g5. So that black cannot play knight e4 and now, now white is threatening knight e4. e4. What to play with the black pieces after bishop g5? Maybe rook a8 is possible. Let's let's check out uh, rook a8. If white captures, black captures, and after e4, black can just capture on e4. Maybe captures captures and rook e7 uh, looks equal this this uh, line is forced but it still looks equal after bishop g5 what else can black play I like rook a8. Maybe rook a8 white can try to play rook a1. Uh, capture, capture, and white has a full control over the a file right now, but how to use it? It's not easy to use it. Also not easy to play with the black, and uh, white wants to play e4, looks like, here. Bishop g5. So rook a8 is a possibility. Any other possibilities here for black? Maybe simple, maybe simple. Just rook f8 to protect e7 pawn. And now I still want to bring the knight to e4 from f6. Well, black has a nice choices, to be honest, in this position. I want to go to check the game uh, in uh, this position because I was in the playing hall and I saw that the queens were exchanged. So rook b4 was played, rook c8, and queen b1. Queen e2, b5, 
bishop b7 and rook c7. White decided to bring the bishop back, rook c8, and... Well, we don't have the position yet, but I saw that the queens were somehow exchanged. Maybe we will get there. And now it's white to play. Uh, maybe it was played uh, bishop b5, queen c2, captures, captures. And this was the position. B2 is hanging, but how to play? Uh, but white can just play bishop d3 maybe here, because after rook b2, rook b8, is it working? Let's start again. Uh, yeah, I said that it looks like there was played the bishop b5, queen c2, queen captured, captured, and it was white to play. And uh, white has to find a move. Maybe just bishop c6. And if rook b2, again rook b8, and the bishop is pinned. But there might, might be neither fate kind of a move. But okay, I mean, uh, rook d8, uh, rook b3, and after rook d6, white has to have a big advantage. It's impossible that white is not. Yeah, white is winning. We can say white is winning. Okay, this is the position that we have right now. Uh, any games uh, our viewers would like to check? Let me know. Maybe Cinderov's position. What happened there? Uh, this is the position where we stopped. And it was played rook c8, queen d4 check, rook d4, rook f1 check, bishop f5, and queen a7. White captured the pawn, knight e7, queen c5, rook d8, queen b6, rook d7, queen d4. King e6, a4. The passed pawn. The passed pawn is going to decide the game. Queen b6, 7. Okay. Uh, white finally pushed the pawn. For queen c4, rook e d5, a6. King f6, queen b4, rook b5, and queen a3. And this is the current position as predicted. It's not going to be an easy task for white to win in this position, but... White will have to do a few accurate moves and then it's going to be it with the, because with this pawn. Okay, rook a7, queen d6 work now or no? What happens after queen d6? Let's say king f7 and uh, rook a7 has to be a blunder, I feel like. King f7 and how to continue here? Uh, I don't want to play queen d4 to give up this a6 passed pawn. But what else to do? Maybe there is rook e1. To prevent rook a6. And then, uh, then it's going to be easy. d4 is hanging. Well, it has to be wi uh, winning for white. It has to be winning for white. Because the king is very weak. It's like very weak and uh, pawns are hanging, the past pawn. Uh, rook and two pieces against the queen. It's not enough to fight. Maybe rook e5 might be coming at some point. Well. Uh, in the game, uh, Madaminov against uh, Xiu Xianju. I think we stopped somewhere. Hello, Yuzi Chess, Uzbekistan Chess. 
Pakistan Chess is rooting for Sindarov. I will go back shortly to the position. I just want to see what happened here. Well, like his piece up and it's going to be uh, decided very soon. In uh, Suleymanov position, bishop g5 and uh, still waiting for the game. And let's check the Sindarov position again. Uh, rook a7 and uh, rook e1 was played. I still like this queen d6 check. But okay, I mean, uh, white can play queen d6 the next move anytime. What to play with the black pieces now? Is there a knight d5? There a knight d5. Well, queen d6. King f7 and just queen c6. Has to be an easy win for white. Okay, rook e1 was played c5. Yeah, c5. And now what to do with this queen? Queen on d6 was way uh, better. Yes, we saw, we saw yesterday's game. Uh, looks like today too, by the way. <laughs> looks like today too, there is, a, there is a big chance. But I didn't like this part where uh, the queen didn't go to d6 and stayed on a3. Because what to do with the queen now? Rook b6 is not happening yet, but... Still, I, I prefer to see this queen on c6, on d6, sorry, here. Because d4 is always hanging and... Uh, okay, in the Suleymanov game, Suleymanov played uh, rook f8. Uh, just protects the e7 pawn and wants to play knight f e4 not letting white to play for uh, the whole game as you can uh, see uh, it was tried to play e4 but uh, it didn't work out white never managed to uh, play the e4 and uh, after knight f4 white has to we can say that white has to hold this position because of the low time and uh, it's not going to be an easy task. It's not going to be an easy task. If white manages to hold it. Uh, not because the position is winning for black, but it's really not easy to play when you are low on time. Let's see what happened in the Fedosev game. I, was in the, I saw some interesting stuff happening uh, in the playing hall. Thank you, Uzbek Stanchez. So knight c5, bishop c4, where we stopped, uh, just one second, yeah. Knight c5 was played, bishop c4, bishop uh, f6, rook d1, and black exchanged this bishop with a, uh, black took the pawn, knight f1 and queen e4. Of course, exchanging the queens with the pawn up is going to be the favor for black, Knight e3 and queen f4, queen e1, knight e4, rook d4 and queen f6. Knight c2, knight c3. Okay, uh, what can we say? Uh, black has a big advantage. Black has an extra pawn. The bishop on b7 is still a very strong piece. Black doesn't have a passed pawn yet, but uh, after creating the passed pawn, it's going to be a very easy task for the black to win in this position. But uh, we have to check this move. Uh, no. Even knight b4 doesn't work because the uh, 4 rook is hanging. Is there anywhere, any way to take the rook from d4 with a tempo? Yeah, okay, rook d7. This is what I was thinking about, to take the rook with a tempo, trying to capture the b4 pawn. But what happens after bishop d7, bishop c6 here? 
and the rook will still have to move. The rook still will have to move. Where? Let's say rook d3, and can black protect this pawn on b4? Uh, there is maybe a nice move. What happens after queen g5? I am threatening to give a checkmate, queen g2. Okay, Evalbar doesn't like it and I understand why. Uh, my idea was that if a white plays like a move like g3, uh, black can play queen c1, queen c1 and knight d2, but unfortunately after uh, queen g5, rook g3, uh, the same idea doesn't work because the bishop is controlling the e2 square now and it's not gonna working so but it was it was interesting we can say uh, rook d7 but bishop c6 has to be played uh, because what else to play mm, yeah bishop c6 was played and here white will have to make a choice and decision where to put the rook, maybe rook d6 also possible, but okay, rook d3 was played very fast. Rook d3 would look very logical, by the way, we can say, because the rook wants to come to g3 uh, after knight before c3. Knight is always hanging, and, and I think uh, black is going to take some time here for thinking. There's also this idea like queen f4 with the, sa with the same idea of uh, threatening queen c1. But uh, white will, of course, see it and find some solution. But uh, queen f4 can be a good move. Okay, we'll give some time to Fedosev to think about the game. And let's go to the game of a Kobalia again. What happened in the game after bishop uh, rook b8, queen e1, rook b6, bishop d3, and bishop d5. And it's a very, very good advantage for the black. White doesn't have a checkmate now. Uh, there are two beautiful central uh, pawns for black. Black can open the b-file at any time. And what to do? g4 might be hanging somewhere, not right now. It's not easy to play with white. It's not easy to play with the white, I can say it uh, for sure. Okay, rook h3. What to play with the black pieces? Maybe even king f8 might be possible here. Like to play king f8 and uh, later try to take queen g4 or bishop b3, uh, try to win another pawn. e4 is a possibility. Maybe even king f7 is a possibility. Uh, maybe rook a8 with the idea of Bishop, uh, queen g4, queen a4. Uh, I like the black position. Rook b8 was played. Uh, rook b8 was played. The thing is that black is not threatening to capture bishop b3 because after bishop b3, pawn captures, rook captures, uh, there is always bishop c4 check for now, but maybe for the later, this rook b8 move is going to be uh, helpful. Uh, what happened in the game at lack of uh, Asaubayeva? So, why didn't take knight c8? I was checking only two moves, but there was another option. And then took now, because before I was trying to do it and uh, white wasn't getting a passed pawn. But here, uh, white has this passed pawn. But black also has a passed pawn. And, uh, well. The white's passed pawn is not moving anywhere. It's the good news for the black. Uh, and what to do now, rook a4? Rook a3? What to play? With the white uh, pieces. Knight c4 is going to happen. How to save the bishop? Bishop b5, maybe c4 might be possible. Yeah, c4, c4 might be possible after bishop b5. Let's check out. Like, um, I want to capture the bishop. Bishop 
okay, let's say queen e2 it's black to play. Black can just capture this. What happens? Capture, capture, and what's next? Queen c4 and yeah, queen uh, rook a Okay, so it was played in the game. Uh, black captured knight c4 and white captured with a rook. I don't see a place where black can lose in this position. I like black's position very, very much. Maybe just double the rooks on the a-file like rook a3 and then try to play rook a8. Some interesting ideas for the black. I like black's position. Uh, shall we go back to the Artemiev's game to see what happened? Okay, a lot of games happened here. A lot of moves happened. Knight f6, capture, sculpture, rook a7, knight d6, bishop g5, rook e8, rook c1, knight d5, e3, bishop f6. And uh, two minutes, two minutes for Artemiev. Only two minutes till the end of the game and... There is no increment after the 40th move. What to do in this kind of situations? And uh, It's hard to play with white pieces. Well, maybe Eval Bar will be saying it's equal, but uh, we can say that we don't believe in it. Uh, the black knight are, knights are standing very well. Rook a8 might be played somewhere. Okay, white is controlling the a-file, has two bishops, but from the matter of time, uh, it's going to be very difficult for white. Okay, Fedosev uh, is still having a nice advantage. Uh, Hans Niemann, what happened in the Hans Niemann game? On board three, uh, Hans Niemann. Bad bishop. You mean bad bishop, the bishop on uh, g7? One knight f4. Well, it's, uh, it's still a closed position on the board three, but when the position will open up, uh, the bishops are going to become monsters. They will become monsters. For now, it's a close, so they are not doing the full job, but the moment it will open up, it's going to be... Trust me. The post structure, yeah. For the black is uh, doubled pawns, but... Uh, Black can has some maneuvers. That's the trick of this position. Let's check out f4. Okay, bishop f4, knight f4. And now black has two bishops, but one of them is gonna be lost. Yeah, one of them is gonna be lost definitely, and that's the main idea for white. Because, uh, okay, if the bishop stayed. Uh, I can say that it would be a very nice advantage for very nice advantage for black. That's why knight d6 is a must. Uh, you, we saw that knight uh, was controlling the uh, b6 pawn the whole game, but in this position it was it was already time to exchange this knight with the bishop. Uh, this bishop on g7. At some point, black will have to play a five, but where and how it's not uh, clear yet. A five will be played at some point. It's impossible that it's not going to be played, but not now. Okay, bishop. Uh, he tried. He tried to exchange the bad bishop with the knight, but it didn't work because bishop h six, queen g three, and well, black played very well. And the bishop is now playing from h6 square. 
is it enough to win the game or no? It, the game will show, but for now, black is fine. And that's the, as I said, that's the trick of this position and this structure. Because it's also not easy to play with the white pieces. He, they were doing a few fast moves. And yeah, black has this problem, but uh, it might seem a problem, but uh, to be honest, these two pawns are controlling very nicely the d5 and d4 squares. And why they are a problem now? How to play with white? I mean, okay, white can try to maneuver with the knight somehow. Yeah, when the time, when you don't have increment after the 40th move, it's kind of uh, stressing. And we can see on all boards that some players are really stressed right now and uh, it's not easy to play. Even even the first board, it's going to be uh, quite uh, stressful for Artemiev to play in that position with the low time. And here, uh, time difference is not so big, so... Uh, but I still feel like it's easier to play with the black pieces. Mm -hmm. F f5 has to be played somewhere. I'm trying to find a nice square for this knight, but okay. I mean, f5 would be a very nice square for the knight, but the knight is not getting there. Uh, yeah, I agree. The knight on c4 was always forcing black to protect the pawn on b6, but it's still two bishops. And two bishops will always be two bishops. And uh, let's not forget also that uh, there was already a threat to play b5 in that position. Like, let's say, if not that d6, there might always be a threat to play b5 now. And uh, by the way, this queen b8 move was interesting uh, to, attack the, to attack b6 pawn, but uh, maybe just bishop b7 here. I, I know, I know the bishop. Uh, okay, no, bishop b7 is losing the pawn. Rook b7 has to be played. Yeah, maybe still keeping the knight to protect the c c uh, b6 pawn was an idea. But uh, it's not like exchanging this knight with the bishop is bad because most of the chess players are scared of these double bishops. See it and. King h1, and we're going to see some very fast moves very soon. Um, f5 works here or no? That's my question. Apparently no. There has to be something. Oh, oh, blunder. Queen h4. Queen h4. So, f5 doesn't work right now. It was played the rook f8. Hi, Sente. We have Sente in the chat also. Uh, f5 wants to be played right now because a rook f e8 was played for preparing a f5 move. Not to blunder again. And uh, I would play with the black pieces after f5. I, d I don't see idea for the white. What to play? Maybe knight f4 here. I like this move knight f4. So good to see all of you in the chat. and. I want to remind to the viewers that if you have any preferred game to check, just let me know and we're going to go and check it out together. After rook f8, knight g1 was played. Uh, why not knight g1? It looked a little bit more passive for me. What happens after f5? f5, there is e5. And the problem is that after f4, uh, white has queen h4. And okay, bishop g7, uh, queen f4, maybe bishop e5. But I'm not sure about this because knight on f3 will be a very, very nice piece. Yeah, knight, knight wants to come to f3 after knight g1. Uh, knight uh, was in a wrong position on e2. It was obvious that knight has to try to find a better square for itself, but the question was where? And... Uh, Dai Changren decided that it's better to put the knight on f3. After knight g1, uh, f5 was not played, just to remind you. Uh, 
Uh, shall we check what happened in the game, in the Cinderov game? Okay, so this didn't happen in the game. Rook a7, rook e1, c5, uh, king b2, knight d5, rook h3, nice move, knight c3, king c1, yeah, king d2. Maybe now queen a1 finally will be played at some point. Uh, king d6 and queen a1. Yeah. And... Uh, Pieces are getting into the game, so it has to be a quite easy game for the white, for Cinderov to win this game. Uh, we have a draw here, by the way. In this position, uh, in the Karukan with the pawn sacrifice, rook c1, rook a8, and knight d3 was played. Uh, rook b8 and bishop d1, king d8, knight b2, b5, yes. Blake is trying to take advantage, but knight a4, and apparently everything is very well blocked. Black tried to break through on the king side also, and they agreed to a draw in this position. Uh, it's hard to say if all players would agree a draw here, uh, because apparently Black still has two rooks, but there is no place to break through. Like, breakthrough is not happening, and uh, throw looks to be very logical. Okay, this game ended in a draw. Artemyov. Let's see what happened after uh, bishop f6. Bishop g2, bishop g5, knight g5, king g7, knight f3, and it's black to play. Uh, by the way, I have to mention that the time trouble is getting a kind of an equal for white and black yeah uh, I can predict to be a, to finish this game in a draw but uh, I still believe that it's gonna be hard for Artemiev to play with a, such a low, line, a low time but we know that he's very good in blitz and it's not easy to say what will actually happen, but my prediction is a draw. In the Fedosev game, not much changed. Rook g3, knight a2, rook b1, and rook b8, and rook a1. Uh, can black play here queen b2? So, black is trying to do everything not to lose this pawn on b4. What happens after queen b2? Is queen b1 a possibility? Queen b1, maybe queen b1, rook b1, and I might have a move bishop b4. And the uh, extra pawn will make itself quiet. Uh, you, you can feel the extra pawn. I, I, I still believe that Fedosev is quite good in, the, in winning in those kind of positions so it's gonna be a long game though okay what happened in this game uh, e. black have any hope on board four yeah that's what I'm checking right now uh, okay bishop b5 queen c2 yeah I saw it right uh, during in the plank hall was played c4 king f8 knight a1 rook c4 the, the rook got uh, trapped so black had to give up the exchange and take the pawn on d5. 97, bishop g5. Okay, f4. Um, if black has some hop. Hop is always there. Wow. Well, 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 what happened here? So king a5, what was white supposed to play here? Because I cannot see it. Uh, I think, yeah, Evan, in these kind of positions, uh, everything is possible, to be honest. And because uh, bishop and past pawns and only rook, white has to play very, very carefully. It's not easy. Because, okay, rook h7, why is it a bad move? Because uh, here black doesn't have d4, 
as every time they play d4, there is rook e8 check. But after rook h7, there is d4 and there is no rook e7 check and d3 is happening. And uh, it's not easy to do with something. What? Maybe rook b7, uh, so that after d3, king d2, there will not be bishop b4, but there is king d4. Of course, black has a nice chances in this situation. Uh, rook h7 and d4, but what to play instead of rook h7? Evalbar thinks that white is completely winning here. h4 right away. Maybe. <coughs> Pardon? Maybe h4. Captures and then maybe take. Yeah, because if d4 now. Uh, it doesn't work because there is a rook h5 check and I win the pawn, so h4 would be a good move. After d4, uh, I can say that practically, practically, it's uh, very dangerous to play with the white, white pieces because I think it's possible like to have two results. It's either white winning or black winning. The pawns are walking and uh, Okay, white has time. That's a big plus, of course, because white can sit down and calculate and uh, see what is happening, but uh, it's complications. It's quite some complications. It shouldn't go there. Uh, shall we check the game of Kobalia? This was an interesting game. What happened here? Uh, Okay, uh, black has only three minutes here, and this is a uh, current position. Rook d4, it followed, rook d4, knight d4, and e3. Uh, this is what I mean. I mean, black had a huge advantage, and after uh, after uh, time trouble, it's not easy to find moves. Because, okay, you know you're winning, but you're in time trouble, and you're not getting any extra time, and it's confusing, it's stressing. <coughs> it's three, and apparently, according to Evelbar, uh, Black's advantage is gone. But I still believe Black can have some advantage. Like, come on, it's impossible. Uh, he wants to play in Queen E5, Knight E4. It's not easy to play with white pieces also. Okay, what to play? Uh, queen c3 maybe? We have knight e4. Yeah. Or no? Queen e3? Well, after queen c3, what can black play here? Maybe queen f4? Queen g3 was played in the game. Attacking e3 and not easy to find a move. Okay, this game will last a few moves yet. <laughs> See what happened here. Uh, RTMF is still on the on the. Okay, uh, knight had to leave the a7 square, the rook. I mean, uh, rook b5, rook a4, and rook a8 and. Absolutely not easy. The rook is never entering to a7 again. And uh, black is playing quite well with the knight, we can say. In the Niemann position, in the Niemann game, f5 was played. f5 was played and white captured and bishop f4. There were some tactical moves happening. Bishop f4 and g5 and queen f2 is the only move to keep the rook and then queen f5. But I still believe the knight on f3 is gonna just be a fantastic piece there, holding everything. Uh, I will go back to the board number four. 
d4. Okay, there was no move done yet. But uh, I agree, I mean, what to play with the white pieces. Uh, you remember in the... Where was it? Uh, there was a game, Magnus Carlsen against uh, Jan Christoph Duda. And they got this kind of a position. And eventually... Duda managed to... Duda had the bishop and two pawns against the rook, against Magnus. And Magnus needed a draw. And the uh, eval bar, like the evaluation of the position, changed so many times during that game. But eventually, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Magnus managed to hold the draw with the rook. So it's definitely not easy. And uh, White is now, Santos is realizing that something somewhere went a little bit wrong. and uh, has to be fixed now but how maybe he has a feeling that there has to be something but how to do it uh, so he's gonna take around like i feel like he's gonna take around like 10 minutes in this position to figure out what to play uh, if you have any ideas like uh, i don't know what will eval bar will say if you can see the eval bar the engine uh, you can tell me so i will also see it in the port number four. Well, what happened? What happened here? What happened here? Okay, d4, white captured, black captured. Well, I thought uh, white will uh, spend more time on trying to understand what will happen in the game, but apparently white was more in a hurry. And it's hard to say what is happening here. I will put my bishop on e5 and then I will try to push one of the pawns. And then when... Okay, rook a7. Wow. And why is this a blunder? Why is this a blunder? d3? d3, king d2 and uh, bishop b4 maybe and then f3. What is happening here? d3, what will happen? Well, okay, king f2 is impossible, of course. King, okay, let's say king d1 and f3. What to play now? Seriously, what to play now? Why rook a7? Why to play rook a7? It's, I don't, and so fast. And it was played so fast. I mean, I, I don't understand. I mean, I understand, uh, but uh, the position looks so so dangerous for White right now, and I thought White is gonna take at least like ten minutes to understand what is happening in this position. But Rook A7 was played, and and D3, and Black is winning. White was winning throughout the whole game, and suddenly, in this end game, wow! And he played so fast this Rook A7 move. What he was supposed to play? Okay, but it's so much easier to play. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe he's trying to blitz out his opponent. But this is something that is not the best choice to go with. When uh, Sometimes when your opponent doesn't have time, you can just sit and try to think and it annoys your opponent, you know, you sit. But okay, I understand what he was trying to do. But rook a7 is, is a decisive move in the game. But uh, if someone can see the engine, I don't, I don't know what to play with instead of rook a7. It already looks so dangerous here, I don't know what to say. It was played rook a7, d3, king f1 and f3 and black wants to play d2. And after d2, even, even king e1 is not possible here because it can be followed with which one, bishop before or... Bishop before to keep the control on e7. Uh, bishop before and uh, to play what? Let's say king d1, okay, f2. And rook f7. And how to win here with the black pieces? Uh, 
looks very winning, but King D1 or H4? King D1 looks uh, looks uh, very very. It it might be a very useful move because then Black doesn't have the same tempos like D3 or F3. But I'm trying to see how to win. Okay, I see. It's just bishop c5, bishop e3, and bishop f4, and it's completely winning. Yeah. What a transformation of a game. It's uh, after, after, to be honest, after, uh, let's say, uh, okay, queen a2 here. Yeah, we had this position, and I thought, well, in this position, I thought that white will win, like, without any problem. Uh, like knight can go back, pawn is just going before b5, but uh, okay, even after exchanging the queens and taking the exchange, it has to be like very winning. Uh, what did everything right? Took the other pawn. Uh, why chose the right pawn structure? And here, there was this beautiful move h4 before capturing rook h7, and after h4, apparently black doesn't have any idea. What happens if h6? Yeah, h6, uh, there is rook h6 now, is different, because after d4 I can take, and the king cannot capture on e4. h4 move was the winning move, but uh, he played very fast this part, I can say that. Even here, right, uh, as you said, uh, the engine says h4 or king d1. This looks very, very logical because uh, no, mo no more active attacking moves like d3. But it's not easy to take the king backwards, especially when all your prep, uh, pieces are trying to go forward. d3, king f3, and f3, and, and black is winning, and one minute is more than enough. Let's not forget that there is an increment uh, 30 seconds after each move. Uh, this has to be more than enough to win this game. We have a result on the second board. Uh, Fedosev, Fedosev after uh, queen b2 was played in the game. Queen d2, bishop e4, queen h6, and rook a8. Bishop c2 wasn't possible because there was this rook a2 move. So he played uh, rook a8, and apparently white, yeah, rook e1, bishop c2. White is just losing a piece after queen h6. So white just blundered the piece after queen h6, and and it was it was game over, and uh, white resigned. Okay, so we have another result here. Uh, we have a draw also in the position Matlakov against Asaubayeva. Uh, they finished the game in this position. Let's uh, let's go again. Uh, so Asaubayeva took the bishop on c4 and then rook a3, and then they agreed a draw. But according to Evelbar, Black uh, has a nice advantage. But of course, Matlakov is a very strong grandmaster, and uh, it's quite understandable. And we have also a draw on the Salem's game. Uh, apparently, he tried to uh, break through somehow. He tried to find many ideas here. Uh, let's start from here. When the queen transformed to c1, rook e8, rook f8, rook e3, uh, rook e6, he tried to push f3 somewhere. Yeah, here, uh, rook f5, rook e7. But apparently, Black's position is really like unbreakable. And Queen e8, Queen e8 was actually played. He tried to, but Rook h2, nice. And after Rook h2, uh, King h2, and uh, Queen f2, it's gonna be a perpetual checks, and it's gonna end in a draw. Uh, Salam tried tried to find nice ideas, but apparently it just didn't work. We have another draw on the board six, and in this position, uh, we can just go through to remember what happened here. 
K6, yeah, okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Can someone explain what ha what is happening? What happens after 95 here? I don't know. Maybe they just agreed a draw after, like rook a5, knight d7, because, well, this is impossible. I think they agreed a draw after rook a5, and this was the end of the game. In the game Artemyev, uh, one of the rooks were exchanged. And Artemyev is playing on seconds. He has seconds on the board. It's uh, equal, but he has only seconds. Uh, in the Niemann game, uh, they got to the rook end game. Okay, we got it here. Uh, what happened here? Yeah. Uh, they got to the rook end game. I think we're gonna have a draw very soon in the in the game also and let's go back to the game of santos and f3 was played rook a1 rook a1 the problem with this is that after d2 let's say rook d1 and king d3 and if uh, okay king d3 there is king f2 probably Bishop g3, nice move, nice move, bishop g3. In the Kobalia game after uh, e3, queen g3, rook e8 was played, queen d6, knight e4, bishop a2, and white is, wow. Okay, uh, taking was impossible because there was a checkmate, like uh, queen a5 and knight d2 and checkmate. Let's say here, knight d2, I will just show you very fast, queen a1. Uh, so bishop a2, king c1, but apparently white is winning now. Knight f3, how shall white win here? Maybe check checks, I don't know. What happens if a lot of checks here? Like rook h8, king f7. No, it's not rook h8. Maybe just top queen e3, e1. So if c3, maybe c3. Well, it was played knight f3, bishop e6, and uh, Eval Bar is not happy about what is happening on the chessboard. And king f6, looks like white will give this check queen f4. What is black planning to play here? Uh, king e7 is impossible because there is knight c6. And white is winning. So after queen f4, uh, bishop f5 has to be played. It's the only move. And now white cannot capture uh, the bishop because there is queen e1. Or even queen d2. King b1, check, king a2, and, and the beautiful checkmate. Queen a5, king b1, knight d2, king c1, and queen a1. And black will be winning. Okay, after king f6, queen f4 was played, bishop f5 was played very fast, and here white has to find a move, because if capturing the bishop, it's a checkmate, and e5 is hanging right now, and queen e1 is a threat. It's not easy. It is absolutely not easy. I will go back to the game of Santos to see what happened after bishop g3. Bishop g3 was played before. And I think d2 and king d3 is just winning the game. Uh, yeah, we forgot about Cinderella's game to check it out. We can check Cinderov. I think here it will be, yeah, d2 was played. b5, king d3. Uh, the thing is that this bishop is very nicely protecting this square and king c2. And b6, uh, king c2, 
and if rook a2 what will happen after rook a2 king c1 rook a1 and king b2 and it's gonna be a win let me let me uh, fastly check what will happen in the game of Cinderov. Okay, how did they transform here? So uh, we missed a lot of moves here. Oof, a lot of moves. Okay, we were stuck somewhere here. We stopped somewhere here, and rookie six takes takes, and he's taking all the pawns. Well, it's two pawns and the queen against two rooks. This has to be winning and just a little technique and the pawns are just going to walk to a queen themselves. Okay, but for now white is giving a lot of checks. Okay, king d5 and the next move is d4. Slowly, slowly he will win this game. Uh, let's see what happened here. Uh, it's tricky, but uh, I think Cinder will manage to. Yeah, it is. It was played as I predicted in the game. Uh, D two, King D three, King C two, and B seven, and okay, it has to be. Yes, Cinder is a mechanist in chess. Uh, I agree with it. Uh, top level guys are. Uh, very, very, you know. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, king d1, queen uh, takes, captures, king here. What is happening here? This is, uh, this might be very uh, tricky also. But okay, shouldn't be that tricky. King d1, queen, queen, king f2. The thing is that if uh, there is only way to win in this position, because if the bishop is not getting to h4 now, it is going to be a draw. I'm going to take pawn, and then I'm going to play h4, and then I'm going to transform the king to the h1 square, and this is a very well-known draw. And there is only one way to win in this position, and it's going to be bishop g3. King g3 and king e2. And if the king captures on f3 after bishop g3, it's bishop h4, and it's uh, this is the only way to win the game. And he saw it. He saw bishop. He finds bishop g3 on a second. He finds bishop g3 on a second. Wonderful. Brilliant. This is brilliant. He found bishop g3 on a second. It was the only winning move of the game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Because uh, we, we can check a little bit here. Uh, if, And I'll try to show what will happen. Let's say if king f2, black does any other move. Okay, bishop f4, for example. King f3, and after even king e1, I'm going to play h4, uh, black has to capture it. And king just comes to h1, and this is the well-known draw, because the square on h1 is a different square than the bishop that black has. And the fact that white has one extra pawn in this position is not helping at all. This is brilliant. Bishop g3 check is a brilliant move, and he finds this in only a second. Wonderful. And now black's position is winning. What a change of uh, tables. What a change of uh, tables in this game. White had the big advantage throughout the whole game. And he just played rook h7, and rook h7 was a big blunder, and it was enough to win the game with the black pieces, with the bishop and pawns against the rook, and and white resigns. And white resigns in this position. We have another result here. Uh, let's check what is happening in the game of Artemiev. Wonderful. Bishop g3 was very beautiful.
we have this position, nine seconds. Actually, now it's a time trouble for both of the players. It's not only uh, Artemyev, it's also Suleimanov. And I think this game is going to end the draw. But it's not easy. Black apparently wants to fight uh, because of this uh, B4 weak pawn. And uh, one wrong move and it, it's going to be enough to change the evaluation of the position. But as, as I told you earlier, Artemyev is a very, very strong blitzer and it's not going to be that easy to uh, trick Artemyev here with even with the low time. Uh, in the Hans Niemann game, they are still continuing this rook end game, but it looks drawish to me. Looks drawish to me. We'll come back to here. Let's check what happened in the Kovalias game. Uh, Bishop f5 and knight d7. Knight d7 and uh, king f7 and bishop f5, rook e6. Rook e6. What was the move here for white? This is the most important part. Uh, g5. G5 is the only move. Otherwise, white is winning. And after knight g5, then white has to play knight g4. And the line is going to work now because uh, white is strictly taking the g5 knight. And if king is 7 uh, queen g5 doesn't work here? Uh, apparently no. Because queen g5, king d7, there is no check. Uh, rook h8 is hanging. Queen e1 checkmate is a threat. Uh, rook e8, king e8, and queen b8 trying to give checks, which is a fantastic line. It's impossible to find it. After knight d7, bishop c4, rook e8, rook e6, bishop e6. It's going to follow with the king e7, a beautiful move. Even king e6 is winning, I think. Black is completely winning because black just has one... Uh, one uh, checkmate and the time trouble is uh, real for both of them and king e7 is played on the chessboard and white no longer has any check only rook e8 can be played but it's not enough to gain anything and queen a1 is a checkmate queen e1 is a checkmate how to stop it when you have only one minute looks impossible uh, the game was very, very tricky, very, very tricky. Black had an advantage from opening. Then in a time trouble, white missed some moves and uh, black missed some moves and white could overtake the advantage, but it was, still wasn't easy. And then black played very, very nicely. And this last move, king e7 is also very uh, beautiful. I, I like our last comment. That's right, Sente. It's always a little bit hard work and a little bit more practice. And I'm not capable of that. Can easily become I'm capable of that. Okay, rookie eight was played. Of course, this is a desperation check, and it's gonna be finished very soon. We have another result also here. Uh, Xuxian Ju wins against Madaminov. Okay. Uh, as long as I remember, this game was stuck in the opening and d4, nice move. Getting rid of the uh, isolated pawn. Okay, looks equal to me with a yeah, little advantage for black. But is it enough? Slowly, slowly, the knight and the queen are cooperating so well that rook d4, rook c5, knight e6, g5 was a blunder, and knight f4. Apparently there was a better move than knight g f4, but I'm not going to stop on it now. And this was the end game. Queen and a knight against the queen and a bishop. The well-known fact that queen and a knight are playing better than the queen and a bishop. And the rooks are playing better with the bishops than with the knights. And let's see why people actually say this. Knight h3, king g4, king knight g1, king h4. 
And let's see how tricky was Xuxia and Ju's knight here. Okay. The king is fearless. And black has so many pawns. Okay, this makes sense now. And queen e8. What happens after queen b6? There is a easy win or he just resigned. So queen b8 here and knight c7. Okay, we lose this a queen, yeah. Just lose this a queen and that's why uh, white resigned here. Okay, so we're gonna have a result very soon here. Yeah, very, very soon, I would say. And in the Artemis position. Let's check what happens in the... Okay, in the Hans Niemann game, it's a draw. Has to end in a draw if nothing changed in the Rugen games that I know. Knight e5, and we have this position, rook, knight, and a bishop against rook and two knights. Uh, let's see what happened in the Cinder game. We'll come back here. Okay, uh, Cinder will win, we can say definitely. I offer to take uh, the last very short break and then we're gonna be back. I will check what is happening in the playing hall and then I will be back very soon. Let's see if uh, they improved in some positions or no. Maybe some games finished and I don't know yet. And see you very soon.
Okay, and I'm back, and I'm back uh, from the playing hall with some news because we have results, and apparently, as predicted on the first board, they just finished in a draw. They did a few moves, but then it finished in a draw. Also, on the third board, they finished on a draw, and the rest of the results are already available. I can say that, uh, especially for Uzbekistan chess, uh, Sindarov won his game, and... I guess that's all for today and see you tomorrow for the 29th Abu Dhabi Chess Festival round number four. It was me with you, Woman Chess Grandmaster Maria Gevorkian, and see you tomorrow.